The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. on the clock this morning with my dear friend, Pastor Reverend Anthony Galloway, pastor of St. Mark AME. Um, We have so many different topics to talk about, but it seems as though the universe provides an adequate amount of, I don't want to say schadenfreuder, uh, but certainly content that is worthwhile discussing with a pastor, no less. How are you this morning, Pastor Galloway? I'm I'm blessed. I'm awake and uh, I'm excited to be here. And you're awake because you're you're in um, you're in central or your mountain time. What time are you? In, zone yep. are you in? I'm in central time. Yep. So so it's seven yeah, it's, o'clock. Oh. <laughs> and bless you for getting up this early in the morning. Uh, we really do appreciate it. And there there's some stories that we want to talk about um, uh, that that I want to get your insight on. But before we jump into the news, I kind of want to tease a little bit about what I want to make some space for um, and to talk about your journey um, in becoming the pastor uh, there uh, and. Uh, the connection to your roots, because let me tell you, man, one of the things I'm most excited about in my life right now is digging through my family roots and like, you know, Uh all the generations, you know, Um, talk to us a little bit about that. Well, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, there's some full circleness to it. Um, The church is the historic black church of, of Northern of Duluth. It's uh, in the, at the beginning of kind of the Northern corridor of the state. Um, It's also the, uh, the city where the uh, three black men were lynched um, in, in, uh, in the early 1900s. And so this church has that history. Minnesota, Minnesota, Duluth, Duluth, Minnesota. Minnesota. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so um, the uh, I, I found out upon being appointed to this church by the bishop that my great great grandparents were members of this church as multiple generations in that church. And so there's some full circleness there. And then even the pastors who brought me into ministry and then licensed me to preach um, had all been pastors at this church before. So there's a whole full circleness uh, to the appointment. Mm. I think that's brilliant, man. Um, let's. I, I want to talk more about that uh, as we go uh, this morning because that's. Uh, what are the odds, right? What are, what are the chances? But um, who needs odds or chances when you got favor? Uh, that's a whole different conversation. Uh, let's talk about some some of the stuff in the news that is very, very, very disturbing and troubling. The defense um, in the case of the murderers of Ahmad Arbery made it very clear that they didn't want any more black pastors coming into the proceedings, into the hearing. Uh, into the trial. Um, the first clip I want to give is a look at the trial thus far, because one thing that we've noticed is that this last week has been all about Kyle Rittenhouse. Well, there's mm-hmm. a case going on down here in Georgia or rather over there in Georgia, and it has to do with the murder of a black man at the hands of three vigilantes. Um, so let's take a look first at the summary of the case this far. In this case, All three of these defendants did everything they did based on assumptions. Satilla Shores is a quiet, scenic, middle-class neighborhood. The kind of neighborhood where parents let the kids ride around on their bikes. This is the family and community that Travis McMichael felt a duty and responsibility to made him willing to put himself at risk to help the police detain Ahmaud Arbery. Because Satilla Shores was a neighborhood on edge. Crime had gone up. In Brunswick, Georgia, the trial of Gregory and Travis McMichael and William Roddy Bryan in the death of Ahmaud Arbery is set to enter its fifth day. The chief investigator of the case testified that Brian told him he tried to cut Aubrey off with his truck, saying he wished he could have hit him because if he did, maybe Aubrey would not have been shot. When I turned around, he took off running into the house. Okay. Travis McMichael calling police days before the fatal encounter with Ahmaud Arbery, reporting that he sees a man in a house under construction in his neighborhood. What did he look like? Uh, it's a black male, red shirt, white shorts. When I turned around and saw him and backed up, he reached into his pocket and ran into the house. So I don't know if he's armed or not. Earlier, jurors heard an emergency call by defendant Gregory McMichael, reporting a suspicious person months before his son's call. 
we just went up there and made contact with a real shady looking fella and he, you know possibility he may be the one that's been breaking into all these audible deals right here tonight. Aubrey's parents say they remain hopeful. The tapes make the McMichaels sound like they're responsible citizens reporting crimes. It has emerged that Aubrey was in that neighborhood on at least four different occasions at night, caught on home security video. And there's not yet been a really good explanation for why that is the case. The prosecutors are going to try and show that the McMichaels and Brian overreacted and pursued Aubrey because he was African American. Pastor Galloway, there are miles of <laughs> volumes that could be written about this. What is your first reaction? Well, so um, one of my uh, fraternity brothers is um, part of the Juror Project in Louisiana, and um, he had talked to us, uh, to me in Georgia, uh, on a podcast that we do a while ago talking about the jury selection and the Chauvin trial, which we covered. Um, and this this was, a, again, one of those those things, right? I, I get a sense. Have you ever seen that movie Liar, Liar with Jim Carrey? There's a part <laughs> where he objects to something and the judge goes, why? And he goes, because it's detrimental <laughs> to my case. That's That's <laughs> essentially what what we see um, happening here, you know, with the not wanting mm. to have, you know, this concern about somehow the jury is going to be influenced not by facts or figures, but by purely G intimidation of of somebody uh, who who represents or, or may represent um, black community interests, right? Mm. Um, and and so one of the things that that that's interesting in all of this, and and, and when we had um, Will Snowden from the uh, Juror Project um, on, he, he talked about the fact that juries have been a, a a huge issue in our in our in our in our history. One, the fact that we don't serve on juries, but juries have often in uh, can overturned even convictions where we've won. And so juries are a huge deal. And so it makes sense to me that the defense will be trying to to um, make a case, not necessarily because of what they think the jury might do, but to lay the groundwork for appeal later on. And this is something that we saw maneuvering in the Chauvin trial as well um, mm. in some of those head scratching moments. And so I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that um, as one of the reasons why why this focusing on this may be a thing. Mm. What insidious plots they have. Mm. Let's go to this next clip. This next clip is the one where um, the defense makes it clear, like you said, uh, Pastor Galloway, um, they didn't want the very presence of the interest of the black community in the form of a black pastor. Uh, there, There is a lot of debate whether or not Al Sharpton is that representative or if there is any such representative, but that's a whole nother conversation for a different day. Let's listen mm -hmm. to this absurd clip. My understanding while I was cross-examining investigator Lowry yesterday is that the right Reverend Al Sharpton managed to find his way into the back of the courtroom. Uh, I'm guessing he was somehow there at the invitation of the victim's family in this case. Uh, and I have nothing personally against Mr. Sharpton. My concern is that it's one thing for the family to be present. It's another thing to ask for the lawyers to be present. But if we're going to start a precedent starting yesterday, we're going to bring high profile members of the African American community into the courtroom to sit with the family during the trial in the presence of the jury. I believe that's intimidating and it's an attempt to pressure, could be consciously or unconsciously, an attempt to, to pressure or influence the jury. To my knowledge, Reverend Al Sharpton has no church in Glen County, never has, hasn't been here since Elaine Brown ran for mayor, to my knowledge. The idea that we're going to be serially bringing these people in to sit with the victim's family one after another obviously there's only so many pastors they can have and if that, their pastor's al sharpton right now that's fine but then that's it we don't want any more black pastors coming in here or other jesse jackson whoever was in was in here earlier this week sitting with the victim's family trying to influence a jury in this case i think the court can understand my concern uh, about bringing people in who really don't <laughs> have any ties <laughs> to this case other than political interests. I um Pastor Galloway. <laughs> you see, you Man, see, you see that sister's face. You see, you see, you see the white sister's face next to him. Yes, yes, I'm yes. Glad someone yes. appreciated my handiwork. And, and you know, oh. here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, for the most part, I listened to the show. I don't, I did, when I, when I heard your expression, I went to look at her face. Um, but even in, in just listening to this, Pastor Galloway, I promise you this sounds like it could be 1950. I promise it, you it, it could be taking out this, uh, something <laughs> off of a time to kill. You know, it's, it, it, give me, what are your other thoughts about this? 
Well, so, so, <laughs> so, so at the risk of, of, I'm just going to come out and come out and say it, right? So your job as a defense attorney is to throw everything you can at this for your client. And so, unfortunately, we are living in a society where this is an option. This is this is a way that can work um, at the same time, you know, that that insinuation that somehow, um, you know, you can only have so many pastors. If the family has called for a spiritual leader in community to come and be a part of something um, that is not new. And that's something that's that's, you know, that's called upon in, in many different areas. I've got folks who have familial connections to me as a new pastor who are going to be facing some 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 court proceedings and and when you are in the midst of of either being on, on, on trial and having you know somebody who has victimized your family there having somebody there who brings some kind of comfort to you is is a thing and so i just want to make sure that folks don't 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 see this purely as something else right at the same time it very well could be uh, a factor to remind folks of of the connection of this to something much larger. Um, but it, it isn't just Al Sharpton that represents that. And it's not the only time that I've seen that used in other ways. How many times have I seen folks in the audience? Um, mm. <laughs> I mean, let's be, I mean, some one of my favorite examples of this doesn't even come from real life, right? It's, it's, it's uh, the Godfather <laughs> when Michael Corleone um, brings in uh, the guy who's, who's his witness against him's brother <laughs> for the same mm, way. Mm, so, so the, mm-hmm. the, the idea that's going to be used in one hand and not in the other, I'm being facetious with that reference, but um, right. Right. Yeah. The fact that it's going to be used in one group and not, by, and not by the other, the other piece is watch the correction of the, of the lawyer um, as he's talking about this. Um, he immediately goes and starts using the language conscious or unconscious, right? Oh, you know, uh-huh. let me just, let me just assume that, that maybe this is not, they don't even intend this, but it has, this net effect at the end um oh now they of, believe in unconscious biases <laughs> it, it, exactly and, and we saw it in the rittenhouse case as well with the judges trying to decide you know what can be there and what cannot right even in the chauvin trial that we covered uh, that miss georgia covered um what comes forward in the, even in that was this insinuation that somehow um the movement for changing laws that are that are resulting in, in these unarmed deaths and things like that isn't of itself political. You often get into conversations where folks will bring in or have a racial conversation and, and, and folks who have either ne- had the privilege of never having those conversations or not being in those will say, oh, why are you being so political? So then that your own racial experience is in itself itself political means that you can't defend yourself in many different areas because that terminology is used. So there's there was mm. there's dog whistles even in what was happening here to the tactics of not having racialized discourse so that things don't have to change or so that I don't have to deal with the reality and the severity of my part, my part. Even far back into the first clip, right, um, that I see that thread going back where the insinuation in the in the 911 calls that this mm-hmm. is a nice neighborhood, the kind of neighborhood that you get to ride your bikes in. Um, it, do black folks not get to ride bikes in neighborhoods? <laughs> do we not get, you know, is it just inherently uh, suspicious? What did the guy call him? Uh, said he looked spooky or uh, some, mm-hmm. some kind of reference he used. Is it inherently terrifying to white people to see us outside exercising? You know, that's why I took so much time getting to know all mm-hmm. of the white folks on the beach. I'm currently um, uh, exercising mm-hmm. on every morning because, you know, a black man in a red hoodie is a pretty big target. Well, and, and see, this is this is the net outcome of some of these mental models that are that are got. If 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 Kyle Rittenhouse hadn't grown up with mental models that that um, that said that this kind of political uh, organizing or protesting and and have a certain mindset of that, he would have never gone into that situation in that way. If these two um, you know fake vigilantes um, that sh- that gunned down Ahmaud Aubrey, if they would have um, if they didn't have these mental models, if this hadn't been set, if these perceptions and stereotypes hadn't been set. Um, then the actions that that resulted from them wouldn't have been what they are. And so we've got to keep we've got to uh, keep in mind. And I think that's what's being resisted so much here is that if we allow for for the uh, these mental models to be a conversation, we might actually see that the behaviors that have resulted in the loss of life are a result of growing up with these mental models. And that shame is just too hard to bear for some people. Mm. Before we move on to the next topic, Doc, I want to get um, our Al Sharpton's response on this. Um, and again, and I'm with you. I, I just want to make it clear that she could pull it. I, I wish there was a challenge. How many black pastors are we? There, there's not a there's a long list of black pastors. 
I mean, we could put a new black pastor in there every hour through the rest of this trial and have a black pastor who is representative of uh, this family's intent. Uh, that said, here's Al Sharpton's response. Now tell them they can't have the ministers of their choice to sit there and console them while they're sitting there looking at who murdered their son and their families. So now you not only have taken their son, you want to take those of us that would come and console them. Now clearly as the judge responded, it was directed at me, because how do they know the difference between a black pastor or not? I think that clearly because I was in the courtroom yesterday in Brunswick, Georgia, and they think that because some of the jurors looked out and looked, appeared to recognize me, that that would influence or intimidate the jury. The parents said publicly they invited me to come. I've been with them from the beginning. They have the right to be consoled by anyone. We were not being disruptive, as the judge said. But the audacity, the arrogance to say that not only are you going to have to sit there and look at your son's killers every day and their families, we're going to choose who can come and console you in the courtroom. It's like pouring salt in the wound. Oh, I'll be back. The parents invited me, as they said yesterday, and they said yesterday they wanted me to come again, and I will make it my business you know, to come again. You know, Pastor Sharpton has something. He's on to something there, and I'd like to flesh it out with you a little bit. Um, if it's about Al Sharpton, then this defense attorney should have said it with his chest and called him out and just said, hey, I don't like Al Sharpton being here because Al, Al Sharpton represents a very specific type of intimidation. OK, that's arguable. But instead of having the courage to do that very directly, this defense attorney fell into the arms of the strength, the collective strength of white supremacy and said no black pastors allowed. Well, well so, not so anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this this has a lot of, of 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 this hits home for for us here in Minnesota because we have the Potter trial coming up and the killing of Dante Wright, which happened the week of the Chauvin verdict. And so right. um, and I was there, one of the pastors who was called in by the Wright family at the vigil. Um, and, and so we got to see that in our cultural community space, especially the spiritual community space, um, as it pertains to black cultural <laughs> spiritual uh, connections, they were happy to see we, we we had a pastoral vanguard. There were clergy from across the region that helped to set up a kind of a, a very parameter and make sure the family got to grieve the way that they did and help them. To, you know, create a prayer service for it. And the look on the right family's face when when attorney Crump showed up and this other folks came in there, this sigh that said, OK, great, this we're, we're going to make sure that folks are going to keep attention on this. And this is going to be treated the way it needs to be um, is a piece of the comfort. And so I just want to want to want to call into the fact that this isn't the first time that we've seen a family reach out to to clergy and clergy be able to show up for that level of comfort. Um, the other piece that comes to mind here, and I fully agree with you on that point. Um, that that if this was about um, somehow a, a political uh, game being played or a political um, um, uh, act of intimidation on the part of, quote unquote, those black pastors, then um, then he should have said it and called it out in that, in that in that way. The fact that he didn't, you know, sets that precedent that anybody who represents faith walks could be that intimidation. So if white pastors show up in their collars um, to, 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 to stand with the family um, and help console them in this really, really difficult time as they watch and sit here and see that their killers may go free, that is a that matters. <laughs> and that requires some pastoral care. And I think there would be, yeah. would be hard pressed to find a whole lot of, of, of legitimate, you know, Christ thinking pastors, if you want to, if you're in the Christian faith mm. side of things. That that wouldn't say, hey, my duty is is to do that. And I would I would put that challenge out to anybody. If I am in need and you are a pastor and I call for your help, our job is to show up. Period. Mm. Well, I, I think I think, though, the defense attorney would not have a problem with the white pastor showing up. No, <laughs> uh, any more or any more than uh, the people on the beach that I'm kind of occupying mm. um, would have had a problem with a white guy in a red hoodie mm -hmm. showing up there's just no inherent danger seen with these whiteness you know these people who occupy that space of whiteness not about their skin it's about their ideology they have a consistent ideology there, there's no fear of a white mm -hmm. pastor because they know that white pastor is going to be on their side politically can i also add that that you know just you know one of the things that 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 um, has to be, be be spoken here is that is that Al Sharpton has been there and and, vis and witnessed and walked through this situation unfortunately with many families. 
So, right. so it makes sense to get somebody who has um, that faith walk and that understanding and has been there and seen this play out. And so, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, the families of folks who have been victimized in this way, talk to each other and they share. Yeah. And so it, I, you can't tell me that the Aubrey family hasn't talked to the Wright family or the Floyd family or the, or the, or the Rice family or any of these other folks have lost folks. Um, mm. And, and, and said, Hey, here are some things to think about. Um, there's a, mo- a group of women who have lost children um, in this way that have gotten together and they can, t- they have breakfast and meetings and they're connecting to each other and they reach out whenever another mother falls falls into um, this unfortunate situation. And so there are networks mm. of folks to support families. And Al Sharpton was part of setting that up. And so, I want people you know, to really that, think that about matters. that, man. Think about that. The fact that they are killing so many black folks that there's now a most feared sorority and fraternity that no one wants to be a part of. But no, they've killed enough of us for there to be an entire group of people who can create communities around how to survive the collective grief and the trauma of having your child killed either by a vigilante, your black child killed by a vigilante or by the police. Um, We're almost out of time. um, And I know we we did get started a a little late here, so we probably will go over a few minutes over the 830 hour. Um, I want to shift gears to this Flint water crisis and the six hundred and twenty six million dollar settlement that has been approved. The funds will go to residents of Flint, Michigan. Let's take a listen to this most significant update. Lead tainted water in Flint, Michigan. In 2014, the city switched its water supply from Lake Huron to the Flint River. The state was accused of overlooking the risks of switching the city's water source without treating the water to reduce corrosion. As a result, the water caused lead in old pipes to break off and flow through taps. Flint later switched back to a Detroit regional water agency in 2015. Settlement of $626 million means every child who was exposed, plus many adults, businesses and others, will receive payments. The money is coming mainly from the state, which allegedly ignored the problem. Okay, I, you know, listening to that that breakdown, thank you for putting that uh pacing that together for us, David, because it does jog my memory as to how this happened in the first place. Those emergencies, uh, emergency powers given to a Republican uh, governor back in the day, and he made that switch. Um, my memory may be jogged a little bit, but um, yeah, this is how we got here. And now they're willing to pay six hundred and twenty six million. What, what's your thoughts, Pastor Galloway? Well, so so it's it's funny. This is the, the way that God puts those in place. So the Lutheran Church has a water um, a environmental justice arm um, in in the Minneapolis Synod, and I was able to travel with several uh, Lutheran pastors and other clergy to go and do some support for frontline workers in the Flint water crisis. Um, this starts way before this 2014 situation. Though this is one of several crises. The first crisis was the water shutoffs when the water bills spiked and skyrocketed, and folks couldn't afford their water bills, and people began to shut off water. And Legionnaire's disease began to run rampant in the shutoff pipes. That's what started the People's Water Board wow. in Flint, Michigan. 2014 wow. was 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 the was another crisis that was brought on by the giving over of powers to a city manager after they That's ousted right. the, the black mayor um, of that That's area. So mm-hmm. and so and so and so the the movement from Michigan water to 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 there's there's a whole lot that goes into there. And so I just want to make sure that folks see the connection of this as one step standpoint. And so when they see the settlement that comes forward and how it'll be geared towards children in particular and folks who have lost business and things like that. Um, it, that 626 million starts to get real small when you think about the folks who began having issues in the early 2000s. And then this mm. was just a compounding factor. So, mm. so I'm glad that it moved in this direction and it's the largest of its kind. Um, but it does not address the need, um, that might actually, uh, it, it exists there and it doesn't, uh, acknowledge the long history of the people's water board struggling for, for water issues in this area. Mm. You know, I did not know that first part. No, I didn't know that that was uh, there was a but there's always more backstory, isn't there? There's always something that that's a prelude to a prelude. I, w- I want to offer one of the things that the stabs in the eye that we saw and heard from the front line uh, uh, workers who were began to tell us the, the fuller story. Right. Is that all this while Nestle's able to draw as much water in that Michigan out of Lake Michigan water table um, almost as they want. Um, you know, and so this idea about where do we do, we, you know, do we not have the resources for this again, you know, this whole while, um, you know, Nestle's having to deal with this PR issue of the fact that they get to 
to draw copious amounts of water um, uh, as they want a need for their own market. And so there's a lot of things that go pieces that go into this uh, that those frontline workers wanted to bring forward. Go to the People's Water Board in Mich- in, in Flint, uh, Michigan, and, and they'll tell you a lot more of those stories on the ground that help to contextualize this a lot better. Man, listen, it's it's so much. You know what I think we're suffering under? I think we're suffering under a strategy of um, of of sat- oversaturation. There's an oversaturation of absurdities that we're living under every single moment of every single day that we're not able to really triangulate the real position. Right. Think about this, man. Nestle can get all the water they want. And. Flint is now, years later, how many families, how many lives have been destroyed and now finally going to get a settlement? And I am worried. I am concerned about the distribution of that settlement and how it's going to be, hand, you know, how, what, how much is each person getting? What is the percentage that the attorneys are taking? Because at the end of the day, you give this money out and these people still end up in poverty. Oh, that's a problem. Well, and, and to that point, the this is this is the settlement for uh addressing the wrongs. The, the judge did hold separate uh, um, the decision and talk about the attorney's fees, which may, which has a potential still to be added as something separate. So we may actually see this number go up in terms of Excellent. overall money that has to get paid Excellent. out. So that is still oh, in the Oh, the details matter. Oh, and you know, with the victory, there's a, yes, the conversation about attorney's yeah. fees. Listen, uh, Pastor Galloway, stick with us for the next segment. We're going to be sp- uh, speaking about what's happening going on in, uh, in Puerto Rico. DJ Exclusive is in the building, so I want to the floor to get us a music break uh, when we come back. I want to get in the conversation um, uh, basically about the religious leaders picking our politicians. Um, there's a lot there, and we got to unpack oh, yeah. it while we have you here. We'll be back um, with more on the Benjamin Dixon Show right after this. Everybody, it is Friday, November twelfth, two thousand and twenty-one. I am Benjamin Dixon, joined as always by my brother from another mother, DJ Exclusive, on the ones and twos. DJ Exclusive, you look like an old school DJ with those headphones this morning. How you doing, man? Man, I'm all right. These things is hot. <laughs> <laughs> and we're also sweat, joined sweat by boxing your ears. <laughs> man, what? I, I guarantee you, by the end of the show, when I pull these off, sweat is just gonna pour down like a rainfall. Okay. Hey, <laughs> hey, Pat Galloway, sweat like drops of blood, <laughs> right? <laughs> Take it down to the to uh, uh to um. Oh man, that's as far as my uh, theology kind of remember my memory goes. I, I can't take go deep as passion. I used to. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. where it was. We were gonna take them to the garden, to the garden of the Gethsemane. Lord, that's garden. where we were gonna take them. <laughs> Uh, and and who else could take us there better than Pastor Anthony Galloway joining us uh, again for this segment, brother? Thanks so much for hanging out with us. You, yeah, you no know, problem, no problem. before and, and and Pastor Galloway, before we get started, you know, <laughs> I'm a man that realizes and notices a lot of things, and I don't know if maybe my Zoom just froze up, but I swear that thing say Pascal Robert, and I'm like, that's not Pascal. <laughs> <laughs> man let me tell you something <laughs> Baba Tunde I can, I can hear Baba Tunde in the background cusses no I, I know I call out everything y'all talk man come on <laughs> 
Baba Tunde said, but listen, listen, in, in, all, in all fairness to uh, 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 it, every, everything that could go wrong technically went wrong this morning right before the ship was about to take off. So we've been flying the ship as we've been repairing it. And we've been in the very capable hands of none other than our brother, Baba Tunde. So shout out to you, brother. And, and also we have um, in the midst of all this, we actually have our guest uh, that I want to bring into the conversation um, that uh, a conversation, to be quite honest, I've been trying to have on our show for some time, but for, because of scheduling conflict flicks with my friend Andrew Padilla, uh, we weren't able to bring him um, or to have this conversation. But I want to bring on Carlos Barreros uh, Polanco, um, uh, who's joining us to discuss his work um, around Puerto Rico. And uh, this morning, we are going to talk this, this situation about the power grid, the debt, the privatization of the electrical grid and the ongoing protests. And honestly, all but crisis that's going on in Puerto Rico. Thank you for joining us this morning. How are you? Hi, happy to be here. How's everyone doing? Doing great, man. Good, Pleasure good. having you. Um Help the people like we have we have a couple of clips that can contextualize the, the conversation. But could you just kind of give us a help us to understand what's going on in Puerto Rico with the privatization or the partial privatization of the grid um, and the protests that are uh, coming into reaction? So uh, Puerto Rico's electrical grid, the transmission and the distribution of the grid was privatized earlier this year, starting on June 1st. And since then, we've seen several increases in power with a marked uh, decrease in the quality of the service we're getting. And the, as far as the protests go, there's been a mix of protests against uh, the company that privatized the electrical grid and also against the Financial Oversight and Man- Management Board, which is trying to pass or which is trying to pass a debt restructuring plan currently. So I. <laughs> Help us to I I can see through all those things that you just said, because I've been I've been following this story and studying these things for a while. Um, I kind of want I want to see if we can help the audience get a good visceral grasp of what's happening. Maybe you can help us understand better how we even got to this conversation. How give us some kind of background. How how did they get here to the point of privatization? Because when we're talking about this is a private company, this is a corporation who is now getting some financial benefit, but it's coming at the expense of the people there and the people are subsequently protesting. Give us a little bit of the history there. So for years, Puerto Rico had been incurring debts, uh, trying to pay off uh, government government uh, paychecks and tr- just trying to pay for stuff in general. And then during the Obama-Biden term, they establish a the Financial Oversight and Management Board, Management Board, and as part of their bid to restructure the debt, they kind of like influenced the the governor, Governor Rosselló, who was later ousted, uh, to privatize this part of the electrical grid, and then uh, Luma Energy, which is the con- the company that currently runs transmission and distribution, won that contract. And now they've taken over the privatization of the grid from the Puerto Rican Electric Power Authority, which was the public utility that used to control the entire system of the grid. So we're at the transition point in 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 uh, Puerto Rico's uh, infrastructure narrative where you're going to the partial privatization phase where now Luma Energy, if did I say that pr- pronounce that correctly? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Luma Energy is a private corporation who's won a contract. Why is there a contract for bid in the first place? Why is the why is something that was a public utility now being a privatized conversation? I mean, it's a contract now. Why? Well, as I, I had said uh, earlier, the Financial Oversight Management Board was brought in to kind of deal with Puerto Rico's debt. And as part of that uh, dealing with the debt, they influenced the government to sell that part of the electrical grid because supposedly it would help Puerto Rico deal with the debt. But from what we've seen, it just Uh, has only increased the debt and given us a worse service. Yeah. 
There it is. That's the supposedly that it's supposedly trickle down economics was supposed to trickle down. Right. There's a lot yeah. of supposeds with these. I want to bring in Pastor Galloway. Uh, we were working to get a little something fixed on the back end there. Pastor Galloway, just jump into the conversation uh, wherever it is that you see best. Well, um, just one, just saying hello. Uh, I got family in Ponce and Fajardo, though. So um, uh, uh, just, you know, it's it's it it it, it hurts my heart to see. Um, this happening. And then, you know, we had just gotten done talking with um, what happens when we begin to start to interfere and 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 give oversight um, away from from pub, uh, from kind of publicly observed um, services with Flint, Michigan. And so we see a parallel between the two. What is some of the organizing that's happening on the ground? Like what are, what are some of the the ways in which folks are, are are reacting to this and trying to figure out how to marshal power to address the, the skyrocketing um costs uh, because we saw this with Flint water, the skyrocketing costs that began the right. Flint crisis in the early 2000s. And now we have skyrocketing costs here again, you know, looking down the line, what are some of the ways that people are organizing against it? Well, uh, on the ground, there are several groups that have been trying to fight the privatization since it was announced way back when mainly consisting of uh, the electrical workers union, Utier, which had been protesting for years and on on the day of uh, of when the transmission and distribution kind of got shifted to Luma, they did several protests at uh, storage centers for equipment where they didn't let Luma pass until they were kind of forced to leave. And now some Utier workers are nice. working for Luma. Some have been uh, distributed to other places. Others have sadly lost their jobs. But on the ground, there has been, I want to say, at least one protest every week against Luma, against the the financial oversight board, trying to urge the government to cancel its contract with Luma. <sighs> Man, this, this story really goes, there's so many uh, components to how we got here. Um, the one that you hear me striking at the most is the philosophical <laughs> lie the underlying lie, because I mean, and that's me saying it, you as a journalist, you're it is the supposed theory that this was supposed to fix the debt price crisis. Now, um, Anthony, I think you'll probably, you know, be with me as we question why that there there's a debt crisis in the first place and the connection to colonial, uh, yeah, all, the, all those problems. But I just kind of want to harp on the many lies that are told to us that we observe as fact but when we get the data, it shows the exact opposite, because help me to understand, did Luma do a good job at bringing down the debt crisis there uh, in Puerto Rico? Uh, so far, we haven't seen exact numbers, and that's part of this is a little bit of a separate conversation. But Luma is currently embroiled in at least uh, several lawsuits because they refuse to give information about uh, the company to the court and actually just. Uh, yesterday or the day before, I kind of getting my dates mixed up a little bit. Uh, a judge issued an order for the arrest of Luma CEO because they refused to hand over the documents and get the they handed hell over out. some. Yeah, yeah. So today's Thursday, uh, Tuesday, I want to say. Although I, I should, I, uh, yesterday or the day before, they issued an order for arrest at about 9 a.m. and then people were searching for the CEO Wayne Stensby. Until they they held a special hearing uh, where they Stensby's lawyers convinced the judge to suspend the warrant until Monday, while they checked the documents that Luma did give over to see if they fulfilled all the requirements, and that's what they're currently <laughs> checking into. Uh, my friend, I excuse my expression, but Pastor Galloway, that that connecting tapestry of mm. doing the crime and then refusing to testify. Or to acknowledge in a, a, a subpoena. <laughs> I mean, this is a global thing. Pastor Galloway, get get the last question in, and then um, and then I want to speak, uh, or rather, yeah, just jump in there for me. So, you know, we, we have in this story the exacerbation of the problems with the electrical grid, with the storm um, that came through. And so, um, you know, in all of this embroiled back and forth, is the infrastructure actually being built? I mean, you know, as we deal with these skyrocketing prices, is it is the actual infrastructure challenge being addressed at all? Well, supposedly they're working on 
fixing, but we haven't seen a lot of that yet. Actually, when Luma took over, we saw a spike in blackouts to the point where there was, <laughs> uh, I believe, in early in, in early September, there was a point where about 19% of the island was without power. Or 19% hmm. of the customers of Luma were without power, which is a lot of people. Carlos, so they're incompetent on top of everything else. Yeah, they're inco- I know. I know this may not be like I'm the commentary guy. I know you're the journalist. Let's listen to this clip from uh, Representative Katie Porter. And we also have a clip from Rashida Tlaib. I I, um, I was going to end the conversation. But as you're talking, Pastor Galloway, you reminded me that there's some things that they're going to point out here. Let's take this first mm-hmm. clip. Katie Porter. One of the places most affected by extreme weather over the past two decades, and that is Puerto Rico. Hurricane Maria destroyed the island's electrical grid four years ago and left residents in the dark for months. Today, the fragile power system. How many blackouts have been reported since Luma took over on June 1? The system has a very large number of outages. Congresswoman, both can you, before can you and even after. count them? Is it so big you can't even keep track of them all? Uh, there, there are outages every single day. If you're having trouble um, doing this, and there's voltage spikes, destroyed appliances, house fires, complaints about customer service, um, why should Luma be allowed to continue to manage the plant if it's not actually delivering electricity? Luma has nothing to do with the AES coal plant. Our job is to operate the electric system. Um, Do you not get energy from this plant that you then move along the grid? uh, Puerto Rico receives energy from that plant, yes. And then you move it along the grid? That energy is flowed through the grid to customers. How long do you think it will be until Luna can deliver the energy in a consistent and reliable way with blackouts that are comparable to what we see in the United States and what you saw at your prior employer? I believe that it's going to take many years to transform all of Puerto Rico's electric system. Uh, It's going to require the FEMA funding and it requires a complete overhaul. Uh, It took decades to get where we are today and it's going to it's going to get better month by month by month. But frankly, it's going to take many years to get a world class electric system here. Carlos, we're, we're we're running up on time, but I just I am just flabbergasted at the fact that the entire island of Puerto Rico is now um, at the mercy of the mediocrity of this corporation that's getting hundreds. I'm sure they're getting hundreds. They're talking about FEMA funding, so we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars that they're going to have access no, to. Help me understand. They were asking for currently they're asking ten billion in funding to do oh to magnitudes re- of order the more. Grid. Yeah, it's like <laughs> they're they're getting tons and tons of money, but we haven't seen any market improvement. We've seen a marked decrease in quality that we're getting, which is why so many people continue protesting, continue kind of fighting to get this contract canceled because we're we're just worried about being left in the dark obscene. permanently it's obscene this is obscene how can what can we do we've we we've kind of fleshed this out as much as we could in this time that we've had what's the call to action and how can we help well you could write to representatives on the national resources council of the united states i believe is the one who are handling uh luma energy and also uh reps katie porter and reps rashida Tlaib are the ones who are i've seen constantly dealing with Stansby and asking him the hard questions mm. and then also support mm-hmm. him, uh, support people in Puerto Rico, uh, kind of like boosting their voices like this, I think is a very good way to get the, the message out. You know, um, Carlos, I keep trying to get away from it, but my producer is saying he's saying we got to hear this clip from Rashida Tlaib uh, because not only are we talking about incompetence, we're talking about salaries that they don't even want to disclose. Let's take a listen to this before we get out of here. How many Luma employees executives earn over $200,000 and how many earn over 500,000? I think it was asked that question earlier, but uh, and you I, didn't want to answer, I'm right? Dis- I'm not yeah. able to disclose employee Fine. salaries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to get in the business of providing a public good and for the federal government to subsidize it or for us to play a part in it, then you understand that those salaries are also the, the public salary. Do you understand? So just know that it doesn't make sense that you don't want to reveal that. You don't even have to tell me the names of it. 
I think Velasquez and I are just curious how many of your employees earn over 200,000 and how many of them earn 500,000. I don't need names. I just want to know how many. So if you can follow up and talk to your legal folks, I think they'll come back and tell you that that should be actually transparent and open. Do you know what the medium household income is in Puerto Rico? No, I do not, Congressman. Yeah, it's $20,000, according to the Census Bureau, $20,000. So Luma has received millions of dollars and stands to receive billions more in an attempt to privatize the grid in Puerto Rico over the next 15 years. But the last four months have been a disaster for the people of Puerto Rico and privatization, privatization I know will only worsen it. And the fact of the matter is you failed them just alone in the last four months. So please understand that my frustration with all of this is because they deserve to make sure that they have access to something that is very much a lifeline to medical issues they're just struggling with, being able to provide for their families, of course, food, all those things, appliances, everything is so connected. Brother Carlos, I, I wanted to get that clip in there. Listen, thank you so much for bringing this coverage and sharing this information with us. Tell everyone how they can get up with you. Uh, well, you can keep up uh, with me on my Twitter at Vaquero2XL. It's right down the screen. V-A-Q-U-E-R-O-2XL. And then I'll have an article later at LatinoRebels.com talking about uh, Stensby, uh, Luma CEO Wayne Stensby's uh, arrest warrant and how it kind of all went down. Mm. Mm. Thanks so much for joining us, my friend. We have to have you back soon. Happy to be here. Take care. Bye. Have a good day. Pa- Thank you. Pastor Galloway, if you could, just for a few more minutes here, um, that conversation almost, I almost was getting ready to go another layer deeper because this, it, the connectivity with everything that's happening around us is just, it's, it's just screaming at us. And, and of course, there's the conversation around statehood. And what would be in place and could be in place uh, uh, around that um, in that conversation. So, yeah, the layers are upon layers are there. Um, And but, you know, at at the end of the day, we have um, U.S. citizens who are are receiving this level of disservice and and lack of public infrastructure in our country. And are we okay with that? Um, Mm. This is one of the questions. And it's not just a question for Puerto Rico. It's a question for many different areas. My family in Hinton, West Virginia and Appalachia, we we've got places all across our country where folks, regardless of political party, regardless of race, are are dealing with with poor infrastructure, you know, and will this Mm. new infrastructure bill uh, be something that can be used to tap to address the U.S. citizens not having access to power in Puerto Rico? So Mm. there's there's a lot of layers here and and then james look, look man um if we're talking about power grids and and getting some electricity up after the storms man i i know some brothers i know plenty of brothers who get power up after every hurricane down in south florida <laughs> around here the, and, and these white these white boys out here taking a whole uh, a whole island <laughs> taking in uh, man uh, i think we might need to get into a new business brother <laughs> <laughs> you terrible. I'm good. Oh, you say you're not gonna climb. You ain't climbing up on no. Ain't, you ain't climbing ain't up on no uh, pole. Nothing with no static shock in it. I'm good. <laughs> no, not us. Not, but but not not us. But man, I know some of these country boys. Man, some of these country boys out here that we get this work done. And, and ain't no power grid going out because of no hurricane. And this is it's the incompetence of it. It's it's the fact that these guys have more power outages every day. It's 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 a level of incompetence that we wouldn't we would not allow in our in anywhere but yet they are awarded a contract to the tune of what they said upwards of 10 billion if they get what they're asking i was like my god um pass galloway with the few minutes that we have left um i want to shift gears to that story um that uh was we were talking about from first um so it has some overlap from first samuel it's a uh, it's our daily dose of misinformation and um in in this particular clip it's discussing the church's role in picking political leaders. But obviously the argument is going to be like what church and what type of political leader. Let's take a listen into this clip. This is insane. This is beyond insane at this point. These people need to be arrested. I mean, for violating the constitution so blatantly. And, and I think that the parents of this country, I I think they should just say enough and, and go literally sit at the school. It's interesting that the spiritual people were the ones who went out and recruited the good trees in the field and said, hey, you need to be civil leaders. I can't guarantee you'll win, but you need to be on the ballot and we'll see what the people choose. And that's what Moses did. He became a recruiter. It's interesting that when you look at the next leader over Israel, uh, actually generations later, when you look 
when Saul became king, who chose Saul king? It was the prophet Samuel, because God spoke to him, spoke in his heart and said, this is the guy that needs to be your ruler. See, it wasn't the people with secular thinking that said, that's your ruler. It was a spiritual leader who could discern the hearts and could hear from God and say, hey, this is what we need. Uh, uh, Pastor Galloway, here's the thing. One, this is a, if I'm not mistaken, this is a politician, right, um, 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 uh, David? And, uh, but just, just do what you do. <laughs> so... Uh, just and, and and again, my my goal here is to complicate it because these need to be taken in context. You can't just kind of pluck and choose, right? Um, we we forget that earlier on in First Samuel in chapter eight, Samuel goes to God and is like, "Yo, they want a king, and 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 they just they rebuking me, they rebuking my my guidance and stuff like that, and I'm connecting with you." And God turns around and tells Samuel, he says, "Listen, the voice of the people and all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me." from being king over them. So so if we want to have a fuller mm. story, the, this story begins with 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 Samuel talking to God and God coming to God and saying, a king, this is what a king means for you. If you want to go down that route, then these are all the so, consequences. So what you're that saying is his ex that. his exegesis is incomplete. It's, it, he's proof texting here. He's just picking and plucking a particular text that benefits him. And that's that's the challenge, right? That's the challenge for folks who are really going to dive into scriptures. Is you can't you can't just pull out one that serves your own purpose and ignore the others. We have to sit in that tension. And the tension here is going to have us sit back and go. And there are consequences for going into the type of of, of leadership that doesn't doesn't have God as sole lead. Uh, and this is within this religious context, right? This is a we're different for somebody with a different religious context. So we're really just talking about Christian sp uh, space here. And so to use and and, and say that. Um, uh, you know, is is one thing. Now, the point that he's trying to pull out of there, and there's other scriptures that I actually think would prove his point a little bit better if you wanted to go that route. <laughs> um, but um, the um, the the overarching idea in the selection, right? This the idea is that it should be Christian folks, right? That select right. the leaders. Um, is inherently problematic uh, for a whole lot of different reasons, um, and this and this idea that it's not that there isn't secular selection of of, of powerful leaders. Um, the will of the people had been taken into account. The will of the people was taken into account, even going and in, in acknowledging kings in the first place. So this idea that that there's only one group of folks that are best suited to, to make these selections, um, you know, it raises some other questions that should be problematic for folks as well. Again, just to complicate it because. We're we're supposed to what chew on this wisdom because wisdom is more precious than rubies if you're going to take our wisdom books into account so so let's let's mm. let's let's be careful how we pick and choose mm. you know the mm -mm. What, what backs our arguments mm. man did our hearts not burn within <laughs> as we traveled along the way it's been a it's been a good morning man uh Pastor galloway fridays with you are always enriching tell the people how they can get up with you and support whatever it is you have going on right now uh, you can definitely go to uh, St. Mark AME Church, Duluth, Minnesota, and, and support there. We have regular conversations trying to put some fat on our heads, as, you know, and go into ah. wisdom states. But also, also put... Uh, you know, Georgia Ford, go to GeorgiaFord.com and support the work of this independent journalist. That's she right. is doing amazing work. And we are coming up on the coverage of the Potter trial. This is the officer right. who shot Dante Wright. And that is going to be a prelude. You know, that that is going to be followed in short order by the uh, trial of the other officers in the George Floyd killing. So there's a lot of work. Georgia's work is going to need your support to get some really yeah, good man. on the ground stories out. I see. We're going to have to compete to see who's going to be Georgia's biggest supporter. Um, but today you got it. You don't man. want a, that. Yes. You, you don't want that smoke. I don't want, don't that, want smoke. that smoke. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. I think that's a good smoke for us advantage. to have. <laughs> you got home field advantage. I don't know, man. I might have to recruit her down here to Georgia. That's it, man. Uh, hey, there it is, Georgia. Uh, let's get out of here. DJ Exclusive, take us to a break. When we come back, Rebecca Azor is finally with us from her excursion. We'll be back Ooh. with Like It or Not after this. <laughs> hey, I'm messy. Yeah, don't do sister like that. Good morning again, y'all. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. Like It or Not is starting. I make sure y'all. Good morning, everybody. I'll put on a tight show. Like it or not, with Benjamin Dixon starts now.
<laughs> Who oh, gonna say morning. it? <laughs> good morning. Oh shoot. So good morning. Oh, go ahead. You said good morning. Good morning. Oh, he did his part. I didn't do my part. Yeah. Good morning oh, that- and welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth. And not care who doesn't like it, but I didn't like the way he said good morning, good morning, good morning. It didn't have the energy, well, the strength. Rebecca, all things um, considered. <laughs> Rebecca, but no, he shut the hell up and done with this goddamn show today. All so, things so, considered. <laughs> no, so what I was going to say was that I didn't like that energy. Charged I wanted to know what's in. going she on said so, that we can, bear. so that we can she recharge it. And, and I want start. to poke it. Ben, hold on. I haven't been here for two shows. I just wanted to say... I wanted that Damn energy man. for all of us. So, so Bubba, let's clear it up. In the background, we were having technical difficulties, so we were trying to figure that out. It wasn't that we weren't trying; we were trying to keep you on screen for ninety hours because you know I want to hear you spin. You know, you know I want to hear you spin. What was the problem? We've been had, she is not that. But uh, we've been having. To, this was our morning, girl. You just came in on the end of it, so uh, uh-uh. uh, I don't want to hear none of that. Good morning, so good morning, were, so good. You were, there we go. So you were upset for the whole morning, but I'm here now. We could, we could, we could definitely. Oh, take it. We could take it to the club. We could take it to. We could take it to uh, Magic City. We could, we could, we could. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just. One thing I okay. am happy about though is now I can see y'all moving on the screen at least. So I'm. That, that makes me happy. Thank you. That, yeah. yeah, that makes me happy. Yeah. Well, right. except being logical, except being, well, of course, Rebecca. Listen, but, you, guess, know, I was, you know, I got you know, I got in, you know, I got in with him. I'm like, so we're going to we're, we're doing this again. <laughs> we're we're going right. to not Listen. be on screen. So, OK, it's fine. So, yeah, I know I'm hanging on by <laughs> the blood of Jesus and some of the best. Uh, anyway, um, what's on the so, docket no. this morning? Rebecca, tell us about your where, where have you been? <laughs> you had a story for us? Um, got us. Oh, yeah, no. Um, I uh, I have been it was crazy. So I worked, was trying to work and um get ready for this show on was it Wednesday morning? But my my baby boy, my son. No, he's my nephew. But um, he actually the next day was going to um graduate his basic training from the army. And wow. he's never been away from home. And oh. so, um, yeah, so we, you know, he wanted his family to be there. And I missed when he even went to Oklahoma, Lawton, mm-hmm. Oklahoma, where there's nothing there, nothing well, there. That was an experience. They don't need any American flags as you just step into Lawton, Oklahoma, and you feel <laughs> like you're going to get a bullet to the head. That's what it feels like. <laughs> <What> the- um, <laughs> That escalated it, quickly. It, no, 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 no. But I can't lie. Oklahoma, Oklahoma is beautiful. I like it's, you're gonna say we get some Huskers, some corn, or something. You said get a bullet down. No. But the I black men like, that I did. Let me tell you this: with the black men that I did see ooh. over there, they fine. They fine. Um, Child, that's no. the country, ain't it? Yeah, they fine. They ooh, fine. Rebecca, get you a farmer. Can we, we, They're we beautiful men out there. We, we should. Um, we should. Okay. Um, but my nephew, he he. Really but how many of them are there? Like three. The, he, all three of them was fine. Um, and That's so fine. Um, That's cool. But but, but my I nephew in their favor. My God, today. All right. <laughs> my nephew was very excited to have us there. Um, we surprised awesome. him, and because we are Haitian, here's the story. Oh, we pulled oh up to the to the damn army base, child. <laughs> Look, <laughs> we pulled. He told us an hour before it started because he knew, but he didn't know that all of us were there. So now we got we were, and then we were staying in a little cottage because over there they have a lot of cottages. Um, so it's like a three bedroom, but it's just like small one bathroom. So it's like ninety five Haitians packed into a home, <laughs> and. <laughs> Nothing. Look, nothing new. Nothing new. Um, but as all of us in this damn home, and everybody's trying to do their eyebrows, do their lashes. You know, make sure they dress looking good. I'm like, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Y'all could have woke up earlier for this. But anyways, long story short, we pull up to the damn base. We're like the only other four, other four black families there um and everybody else is white and they're all looking at us like why are these people here because we coming out with high heels we coming out with red lips we coming out like is he, uh, where is he is he over here oh, just yeah. yelling yelling then he Rebecca, sees us and he's like yeah what, what, what are they what happened they're, they're, they're all what what color are they they're white <laughs> so white. so Wait, why are you saying it we, like that because they that you know what I mean when I say white. Quite interesting. They're not only white, white, they're white. 
So, but when we, but he finally sees us, he's embarrassed. And then a commander that he doesn't even know because he sees us, a black family being extra. That's my boy. That's <laughs> mine. Mind you, graduation is over. So that time has came and gone, but we were doing it anyway. Please and, hold um, your applause till every name has been read. Oh, we, here you we, go. So since we missed that, we were like, that's mine. That's mine. Yes, it is. Yeah, he, he has to make sure he doesn't <laughs> smile. It's like, they make him really cold. Um, but a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, army sergeant that doesn't even know him goes, make sure you put your phone away now. Boy, I'm talking to you. My sister was like, who is that? Oh, who is oh, that? God. I was like, we can't do that. We can't do that here. Oh, my God. We can't. We can't. But I'm like, did he just call him, boy? Excuse me. I was, we, was, oh, we was getting real crazy. But then we're like, calm down. And he's like, Tati, please. Like, you're embarrassing me. Like, stop. I'm like, OK, we're not going to do that. But yeah, no, it, that triggered my that triggered the same response to me over here. I was like, what? He, what they call him what? And he does, he's a, I didn't even know that he said that man. I never seen that man in my life that I don't know why he called me over as I was walking to my family. But it got all weird. But anyways, I say this to say I am proud of him anyway. Um, yeah. You know, he it, yesterday was his birthday as well. He was born on 11 11, which was Veterans Day as well. I said, I guess nice. it's all aligning for you. You're supposed to be a veteran. So here you are doing your thing. And um, I love you for it. And what's crazy is he, I don't like that. You know, he had to he had to think about going in there because he wants to benefit. He wants the benefits for the rest of his life. Basically, to know that he's covered and if something would happen to him, his family would be OK, that kind of thing. And he's just a baby. But for him to have to think like that and want to join the army, but him joining mm. the army made him start redirecting his focus and saying, you know what? I want to be here because I want to serve. I want to be here because yeah. I'm going to have, you know, things like that. But it said that him having to go in there, his idea of, um, you know, what made him want to go in was saying, I want to make sure my mom is OK. I want to make sure, you know, those kind of things. But I love mm. my baby boy, man. I love him. Shout out Dada. His name is Iris, and oh. but I call you him. You call Dada. him Dada. Mm-hmm. That's what we used to call my dad, Dada. Uh, interesting. Um, you know, hey, salute to him and um, congratulations because that is an achievement. That's definitely an achievement, yes. and I know he's got some fascinating stories to tell about his time in Oklahoma. Oh yeah. Oh, the stories <laughs> that we already heard were crazy. They can't even leave. They can't even leave the baseball. Hey, he really can't changed the country, right. women's lives over there. Anyway, I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, he got a girlfriend. Oh, oh. Okay, never mind. And I mean, Sorry. plus, yeah. all they Black doing is basic cheat. training. He probably ain't had time for <laughs> do anything anyway. Yeah, <laughs> he had time oh, was, to do oh that's all basic training. I'm sorry, uh, basic training. He ain't seen nothing but mud. That's all he saw. <laughs> that's all he saw. For two. That's even bigger of an achievement, man. So, congratulations to him. And Rebecca, one thing you said that really is, I'm listening to it. You know, it's kind of hard. It, it's because you know, on a, you know, we and I know you felt this as you sat there. Like you look at it and you say, "This American Empire." Um, and then you see it's a way for your your nephew to take care of his family. Yeah. And how many times have black people had to make that decision across history? Yeah. Oh, the one thing that he did say, and we'll get to the stories. He did say, Tati, um, uh, it's crazy because he speaks so well. Uh, and I remember when he first came here, he couldn't even speak English. But uh, he says to me, he's like, you they are. And I'm like, what does this mean? What you doing? And then he's like, oh, wrong color. Um, they're those people. They are racist. And he's like, you told me about this since I was a little thing because I was instilling in him. <laughs> when you go somewhere. See, that's why they don't want you to teach no critical race theory. <laughs> exactly. But I was telling him to be careful when you're somewhere. You got to be mindful of how you act. And I hate that. I have to tell you that mm-hmm. now. But you got when especially when it's a, a, a there. It's more of them against you. Everything you do is going to be an issue. Look how he just was walking up to his black family. It was an issue. So um, but he was telling me everything that I do. It's like they are pushing me 10 times harder. I feel like I'm working just a little bit harder. They are racist out here. Everyone is racist out here. I feel like that's what he feels like. Like everybody is racist, and especially me being an immigrant. They're like, "Where's your accent from, bro? Like, what would he like? You know?" But um, he's 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 he's. I hate that he has to, he has to, you know, he has to be strong through it. But you know, it's the. I don't know, guys, but I just love him and I, I support him in everything he does. And I hope that he, you know, he makes it out and he like buy, comes back to buy the building or some stuff like that. Oh, well, but, but I do want to say know. this, though, um, a, a general blessing to all of um, all the people who have met to make the decision to sustain their lives by going to serve in the military. Um, yeah. And shout out, to all make of that our shout out to all of you yeah. guys and yeah. women, non-gender conforming and everybody who's doing that um, because, you know, 
We see you and we see the sacrifice that you have to make. And this is not any old God bless America stuff. This is you got to feed your kids. Mm-hmm. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. So yeah. and he ain't even got kids yet to be thinking like that. So he's worried about his mama. But when he does, you know, mm-hmm. but ugh, the world is a crazy place for people who are black and who want to do things like join the army. And as we know, do things like ride a bike, sleep in their car and go running. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, Ahmad Arbery, this is another trial that we've been following closely. And just to know that even in this trial, uh, even while the man has been murdered and he's in his grave. They are still disrespecting his name and treating him as a thing instead of a person. And um, so let's take a look at where we are with the trial thus far. In this case, all three of these defendants did everything they did based on assumptions. Satilla Shores is a quiet, scenic, middle-class neighborhood, the kind of neighborhood where parents let the kids ride around on their bikes. This is the family and community that Travis McMichael felt a duty and responsibility to, made him willing to put himself at risk to help the police detain Ahmaud Arbery because Satilla Shores was a neighborhood on edge. Crime had gone up. In Brunswick, Georgia, the trial of Gregory and Travis McMichael and William Roddy Bryan in the death of Ahmad Aubrey is set to enter its fifth day. The chief investigator of the case testified that Bryan told him he tried to cut Aubrey off with his truck, saying he wished he could have hit him because if he did, maybe Aubrey would not have been shot. When I turned around, he took off running into the house. Okay. Travis McMichael calling police days before the fatal encounter with Ahmaud Arbery, reporting that he sees a man in a house under construction in his neighborhood. What did he look like? Uh, it's a black male, red shirt, white shorts. When I turned around and saw him and backed up, he reached into his pocket and ran into the house. So I don't know if he's armed or not. Earlier, jurors heard an emergency call by defendant Gregory McMichael, reporting a suspicious person months before his son's call. We just went up there and made contact with a real shady looking fella. And he, you know, possibility he may be the one that's been breaking into all these audible deals right there. Right. Aubrey's parents say they remain hopeful. The tapes make the McMichaels sound like they're responsible citizens reporting crimes. It has emerged that Aubrey was in that neighborhood on at least four different occasions at night, caught on home security video. And there's not yet been a really good explanation for why that is the case. The prosecutors are going to try and show that the McMichaels and Brian overreacted and pursued Aubrey because he was African American. <clears throat> Simply because he was African-American. This is all we need to know. I don't know why we move further with the BS of the other people. Um, you know, we, we give, I feel like in these cases, in this particular case, we'll talk about since we're on it and we will follow up with the other ones. But in this particular case, we see a pattern and that's basically to mute and silence, which has already been done now. Aubrey has been silenced. He's murdered. And everything, all the uh, evidence against him is speaking, right? Uh, You know, and people are speaking about the character of Aubrey. But what these people want to do is make sure, which is their duty, but is to make sure that none of that sticks, none of that stands. And to for us to have sympathy with his murderers. And this is where my problem lies. It's like even here, even in this particular moment, There is nothing that I hear that can make me say, oh, that's right. In a home under construction, ain't nobody living there. Nobody living there. Ain't nothing to steal. Ain't nothing to take. And y'all expect uh, a self, this self-defense crap after all the video that everybody has seen. Y'all are going to try that. Y'all are going to try that BS. And they're just going to try to sell it as much as they possibly can. No. Hell no. Not going to happen. Or will it? And that's the problem. I hate that we look at it. We we know that it won't happen, right? We know how how can this happen? We see it right before our eyes. We see that somebody's Mm. life was taken. We we're 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 watching this on video as two men harass a jogger who happens to stop into a home under construction. Under construction. Is somebody living there? Is somebody under attack? Is there an alarm system? What is what he gonna steal a a log? Like what, what what are we doing here? Right. 
What, what's what happening? What is such a threat here to you? PVC it's a Zimmerman. Piping. Yeah, it's a Zimmerman moment all over again. It's people who are, uh, you know, uh, um, abusing authority that nobody gave them. Like who who told you to come around here mm. and be a cop? Who told you to come around here and come in and, 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 and save the community? Do you even know who your neighbors are? Did you even know that he was living somewhere in the in the area? Did you know that? If you're such about community, you would have known this. If that was your duty and job to go around and make sure every home is safe and make sure everyone is okay, you would have known that. It's because mm-hmm. of the color of his skin. And this is that that's the case. And they need to stick to it. But as we know, with these things, they gotta make it over dramatic. They gotta make sure that um, you know, it's it's less black and more white because white is unbiased. The systemic way is unbiased. And we know that's drenched in white supremacy, right? Mm. Anywho, as we move forward with this this case, um, even the defense, you know, like I said, white is right. Anything black is a problem. So they didn't even want <laughs> the idea of black pastors being brought into the hmm. the, the courtroom. Yeah. And 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 the, the black pastor that they're referring to was Al Sharpton. Let's take a listen on what the defense had to say about that. Uh, my understanding, while I was cross examining. <laughs> Investigator Lowry yesterday is that the right Reverend Al Sharpton managed to find his way into the back of the courtroom. Uh, I'm guessing he was somehow there at the invitation of the victim's family in this case. Uh, and I have nothing personally against Mr. Sharpton. My concern is that it's one thing for the family to be present, it's another thing to ask for the lawyers to be present. But if we're going to start a precedent starting yesterday, we're going to bring high profile members of the African American community into the courtroom to sit with the family during the trial in the presence of the jury. I believe that's intimidating and it's an attempt to pressure, could be consciously or unconsciously, an attempt to, to pressure or influence the jury. To my knowledge, Reverend Al Sharpton has no church in Glen County, never has, hasn't been here since Elaine Brown ran for mayor, to my knowledge. The idea that we're going to be serially bringing these people in to sit with the victim's family one after another obviously there's only so many pastors they can have and if their pastor's Al Sharpton right now that's fine but then that's it we don't want any more black pastors coming in here or other Jesse Jackson whoever was in was in here earlier this week sitting with the victim's family trying to influence a jury in this case uh, the I think the court can understand my concern uh, about bringing people in who really don't have any ties to this case other than political interests. This old frumpy looking redneck half bakes this he really went all the way back to a time to kill. He went full 1950s black and white races. We don't want no more of these type of folks coming in these black he pastors. Said black pastors. Black pastors. Black these pastors. Folks are there. And he said he generalized he said, a Jesse Jackson. I couldn't tell if it was Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson. He was colored, is all I could tell you. <laughs> Listen, that's exactly what he said, Ben. <laughs> Look, and, and and it made us all cringe because we're like, did he really just say that? Yes, yes, he did. It made everybody cringe. Not only did um, us, you know, she jumped out of her white skin. All I saw was skeleton right there. I said, this ma'am gave, she said, I am, am I, am I hearing this right? This is embarrassing. Did he just say that? I am, wow, wow. Oh, yeah. She was embarrassed. Let me get it together. Let me get it together. She was embarrassed as hell. That I'm about to be famous. (laughs) She said, and not for the right reasons, but she's like, here I am next to this man. I work with this. I work with this. And these are the moments that I, I be saying, like, this is the time, baby. If you feel if something is shooting up in your bones to say, oh, uh, uh-uh. see, I can't stand for that. I'm not doing this with you. We're not we're not doing that. I need those moments. Right. That's how that? I know you. A re- <laughs> that's how I know you a real one. But to hear this, the ridiculous. Right. You see how ridiculous this man sounds? Absolutely not for you to say that this is going to make the, the, the case uh, shift somewhere because we got the presence of black pastors. And, and then he said, if it's your pastor, it has to be your you can't have more than one pastor. If you go into the church, you shouldn't be church hopping. Right. <laughs> you, you shouldn't be church hopping. Mm-hmm. It, it, it got to be one pastor. And I don't even know what kind of black that pastor is. One got a perm. One got a ponytail or not. One is me. I don't really know. But they Billy all black. Ray Jesus. We don't need black. But we yes. But what we can do is have 
other religious leaders undercover here that may be, you know, they're white mm. and that's all right, you know, um, cause we need, we need the you white Jesus jealous. presence, but we cannot have that black, nothing black in this particular case. We don't want any of it. We don't want or need any of it. That doesn't, and he's saying that blatantly. Why are we not like, why is there, why is this a thing? Ben, Bubba, why is this a thing? Like, I need, I need answers. <laughs> oh no! It, kind of, it pisses me off, though. It's real, t- real talk. Because that's, that's just it's it's stupid. And then you got people in the chat talking about if Ahmad Aubrey would have stayed out of somebody's house, still be alive. Man, look, I don't play that shit around here, bro. That's dead ass real. No, no, I'm trying not to cuss, <sighs> but being yeah, I know your mama, you still, you mama still, but they, I don't give a damn. Purpose. This, they, they this, don't, this look, man, don't, don't worry about the Y'all, y'all are not gonna disrespect <laughs> anything black around here, and that's effing that's right. real. That's right. That's okay. right. If, if right. bro, pull up East Point, Georgia. If I need to get an address, put the hell no, up on not, me. We're not even the address. Don't get the address. Don't get the address. Don't get the address. I need Bubba to be the address. Don't get the address. No, but no, I feel you on that. It is frustrating, though, Ben. It's like those trolls in our comment section are the same ones who are having the conversations or who are owning these conversations. Those trolls yeah, but are I get, the ones. I get joy out of the fact that their lives are so miserable. They have to come to our comment section to find fulfillment. But they're the ones that mirror this defense attorney here. Yes. They they literally uh, they, they, that's what we it's so sad that this is our representation. It, this is our these are the insurrectionists. That's what you like to call them. These are our terrorists, our local terrorists. OK, and they're the ones who are defending these people and getting them off. These are the same people who were at the at the, the Capitol on January 6th. It's a dangerous place for us. We are speaking on, in 2021 on a Friday where we should be enjoying mm. our lives too but here mm. we are discussing just one mm. case and we got two more to follow up on where it's right. very similar where nothing will ever it's like they don't want justice for us and they make it so much harder I've never seen cases with them other people right the clear folks the white folks the white people the Karens the Kins I've never seen their cases be as ridiculous and ask the most look ridiculous how they treat questions. Kyle. Look at it. We're watching a whole terrible, terrible acting scene play its course in the yeah. media. Ain't we not one clip. droplet drop from that man's eye. Not one. And here we are watching a judge say, oh, oh, my God. Oh, no, you would not say that to him. You would not. No, no. Are you the no, defense attorney or are you the good. damn judge? But we're going to get to that in a minute. But that is wild. But look how it's playing out with Kyle and look how it's playing out with the man who can't even speak. <laughs> From the, my God. And it's, it's terrible. And this is this is why it's so painful that we have to automatically assume that it ain't, he's not going to get his justice. Because why? Mm. It's usually like that for us. We only get the furthest that we've gotten recently was accountability. Not true justice, but was accountability. And we clapped so hard for ourselves. But was that really a win? Because we're so used to not getting any justice. So that's sad. The bar is set really low for us. My God. Today, tomorrow, and forevermore. It is set really low for us, especially in this system. But let's see what Al Sharpton had to say about what the damn defense attorney was running his mouth around. Mm. Reverend Al was in his um He looks good it's not, lately. It's, it's not not a time to talk now about it. Tell them they can't have the ministers of their choice to sit there and console them while they're sitting there looking at who murdered their son and their family. So now you not only have taken their son, you want to take those of us that would come and consult them. Now clearly as the judge responded, it was directed at me, because how do they know the difference between a black pastor or not? I think that clearly because I was in the courtroom yesterday in Brunswick, Georgia, and they think that because some of the jurors looked out and looked, appeared to recognize me, that that would influence or intimidate the jury. The parents said publicly they invited me to come. I've been with them from the beginning. They have the right to be consoled by anyone. We were not being disruptive, as the judge said. But the audacity, the arrogance, 
to say that not only are you going to have to sit there and look at your son's killers every day and their families, we're going to choose who can come and console you in the courtroom. It's like pouring salt in the wound. Oh, I'll be back. The parents invited me as they said yesterday and they said yesterday they wanted me to come again and I will make it my business to come again. Mm. 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 And he I'll said, take a whole bunch of pastors with me too. Black, mm -hmm. right? All of them. Yeah. He said, "Hell, not just pastors. Give me some of the uh, uh, some of the the black rabbis, some of the black imams. Give me, give me everybody black. Said, well, like, well, why, why, would, why would you know that? Yeah, I could be a pastor of anything, but it doesn't yeah, matter. Exactly. In this point, he said a key word. He said we weren't being disruptive. He said I was with these people from the beginning, That's and right. all of a sudden it's a problem. We weren't being disruptive. Hey, your skin is a disruption. Your Come skin on, is a disruption, especially in this case. My God, Aubrey skin." was a disruption. That's right. You know, and this is what we have to like, that's, I, that's like the key thing. We can't, it's very frustrating when we watch these cases and they want us to just sit here and take it like we've done in the past years and years and years and years and years. And we've only had conversation at the dinner table because that's where it was safe to have those type of conversations, right? To say, man, you know, you know, that man was wrong. You know, that man was wrong. No, they've tried to condition us to stand in these courthouses uh, and um, be mute to what's going on. Not say anything about these cases um, because we don't know if tomorrow our tires will be flat. We'll have blood uh, or, or, or blood paint on our door calling us N-I-G-G hard E-R. Um, any, mm. All of that. But no, this is 2021. And the best thing that black people you know, have right now, I would say is more of a voice than we've ever had. Right. Um, so we're going to utilize that. But it sucks having to see this. I got to understand the emotions. I know people are saying, you, you know, don't don't let your emotions speak for you. Who? 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 Just call me an owl because who, baby? Who? Hmm, who? Not call me. me. The owl. Who? <laughs> the <tootsie> owl. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, okay. we're not How doing that licks? here. Uh, How I many can't stay either one of y'all. How many licks, bro? Me neither, because it was going to take away from the moment. Um, hey, we're not nah, doing, but no, how, right. no, we're not doing that here. No, because I'm gonna, about to say something that's going to make the moment worse. If, but go ahead. Well, I, here's the thing that bothers me, y'all. In 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 Brownsville, Georgia, the dead man is on trial. Yeah, they're they're talking about. The type of neighborhood that he was running through that these good God fearing white men had to protect. They had a good God fearing constitution right to protect this this scenic neighborhood that you could ride your bikes in. That black man had no right to be there. He's on yeah. trial in Brunswick in yeah. Minneapolis or, or wherever this trial is with Kyle Rittenhouse. You, do you notice that the victims are not on trial? You don't even know the victims names. You wouldn't even know nope. that they were white, white. <laughs> Because they can't quite put those white boys on trial the way they do in Ahmaud Arbery. And they didn't dug up all of Ahmaud's stuff from elementary school. A baby. He's whole ass on trial. He was. They don't. They don't pull him up from when he was in his mama's womb. What was the mother? Was the mother on trial? That's exact. This is the. You see how ridiculous that is. But this is what they're doing. The this is exactly what they're the, doing. It's been a year. And they're acting like he was doing something just yesterday. No, he's dead. He's dead. What about the living people? Did you, he's not we, the one who committed the crime. We were able on the day after we um, the, the uh, Ahmaud Arbery's case or, or the story had came to social media. Social media did six jobs in 24 hours to right. find those white men and their history and who they were connected to and how it makes sense of how racist they are. They had everything, but in this case, they have nothing. And this is my problem. This is my problem, guys. As we move forward, you know, Ben, you were talking about how in the Rittenhouse case, it's a, it's a totally different thing. The dead man is on trial in, in Aubrey's case. And here we can't even we don't even know the names of the victims because they're white. And because they're white, you know, and, 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 and I say that because. They're white, so there was nothing. Uh, uh, they don't want to make it too aggressive. They did not deserve to die, y'all. They didn't deserve to die. They were fighting, um, you know, for for justice as well for black folks. That's right. They were there, That's and enough. but because they're white, they don't want to make them also them in their grave. They're not going to make them, you know, more aggressive. They're not, 
they're know, not used to doing that. They don't have the standard operating procedure of making you no. afraid of white people the way they have the standard exactly. operating procedure. Exactly. But what, of what is the focus people. here? But what is the focus here? I wish that they would name, give them victims a name. I do because they deserve to That's be right. known. That's right. Um, yeah. But in the sense, they don't want to make them seem like, oh, these, you know, they they were a part of this whole, uh, you know, clan thing that was happening. This black clan out there, black power thing. They want to make sure they keep that under wraps. And also, they want to focus on what what people were rallying about that day when uh, Kyle showed up. That's what they want to focus on and show that, oh, my God, this is some kind of like Black Panther situation. He was pulling up with his own, you know, weapons because he wanted to make sure that he was secure uh, because it's a, it's America and white folks need to make sure they're able to tote that gun in case of any emergencies. That means it's case of we black people. Protect the pull neighborhood. Up. We got him to protect the, the neighborhood. And yes, he did. And but the thing is, he was he was taking pictures with folks. And when he they, remember, he was on the streets a little after he was taken in. And all these pictures with people that he was taking, remember, smiling it up in the streets. He wasn't crying mm-hmm. then. He was, he was not crying then. It, he was a celebrity. Mm-hmm. Much like Zimmerman, remember? And mm. when we see this unfolding, you guys are telling me, or, or you guys, I'm talking about social media. I'm reading and there all these people. It's so easy for white people to be like, well, do, do you hear what the news said? Yes, I heard what the news said. I did. But there is a lot of information that is missing here, which is having Kyle Rittenhouse look like a little boy. Remember how they wanted to frame him as a, as a child when he did it? Yeah. Remember that? And what I saw was a man sitting there with no tears in his eyes. Uh, and I recall the moments when everybody was just like, he's a hero. He's an American hero. Remember those? Those cops were looking at him as a, a hero. And because he looked at those cops as heroes, too, it was giving him an upper hand. So what he did was just he was just having a bad day. Huh. Huh. Mm. Well, God damn it. Just having a bad day. Well, damn, for those people who didn't just connect that. I'm sorry, I haven't been with us long enough to understand that she's talking about the ATL spy shooting where mm. now the next excuse was not only is this man so guilty, the man, this, this, this iteration of white male terror was just having a bad day. Mm. So let's take a look. Um, <laughs> I'm, let's take a look. Uh, you know, if we, if we need a breather, we can take it, but I want to ride this thing through. Um, yeah. Let's take a look at the final witness in this case. The defense rested today in the murder trial of Kyle Rittenhouse. Closing arguments set for Monday. The defense's final witness was this man, Frank Hernandez. He recorded video of the first deadly shooting of Joseph Rosenbaum. Hernandez says he traveled the country last summer recording violent protests and that that's why he was in Kenosha. On that deadly night, he says he recorded Rosenbaum pushing around a flaming dumpster. See here? Hernandez says Rosenbaum became aggressive and confronted a group of men who came to the protest with assault-style rifles, just as Rittenhouse did. That's Rosenbaum there in the maroon shirt. Then later, he claims, he saw Rosenbaum charge at Rittenhouse from behind and lunge at him before Rittenhouse wheeled around and opened fire. Hernandez said Rosenbaum was the aggressor that night, not Rittenhouse. This is drone video of the Rosenbaum shooting. You can see him run up to Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse wheels around and opens fire right there. Shoots him four times, we're told. The last shot in the back, according to testimony. When the prosecution got their chance to cross-examine Hernandez, they questioned his credibility. Prosecutors tried repeatedly to paint her, uh, Hernandez as being biased. They even focused on uh, the video that he shot, saying that he made disparaging remarks. Then they zeroed in on his social media accounts. Um, your videos that you have captured of these incidents that you call riots, they're very uh, slanted against the people who are rioting. You characterize them as Antifa, Black Lives Matter, rioters, correct? Because they are rioting in the footage, yes, absolutely. Have you ever posted anything on social media? Yes. In support of Kyle Rittenhouse? One could argue yes. Hmm. One could, I like F that. Boy. One could argue yes. F boy. Um, but, yeah, but um, you guys, yeah, full on. Um, it's, full on. it's funny 
it's <laughs> it's funny because oh, it's not funny, but it's interesting um, that you know it. The video shows they're going to show that part of the video where it looks like he, it's self defense. Amen. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that tied with the witness saying that he follows violent protest. So it's going to tie into also Rittenhouse saying that he wanted to go save the community. All that ties in with each other, which could possibly let this little murderer back on the streets for free. We see what happened with Zimmerman for free. And this sucks because this video is what's going to be shown so much. The conversation as soon as this video came out, social media was up in arms. Those white people, those right people, they were literally up there saying it was if we see it was self-defense. Those people ran up on him and or it could have been. And I'm going to tell I you this know. much. It could, no, that's the conversation. But there was a guy and his name is E. Mackey. And he got into his car from Atlanta, drove over. Um, to Kenosha and said, right, he was following what was going on there. And right when this happened, um, he said, two, he saw what you call it with this gun, written house with this gun, and he was taking pictures. He was doing what that guy did, following a protest, though. He was following the protest, not a violent protest, not something that was meant to go hurt people. He was going out there to go document what was happening, to show what these, you know, black people are feeling, the rage, you know, the, the about our system here. And he said right before that moment, that boy walked around him with the, the gun. So he said he had to go make sure he go get his because a white man walking around with a gun in this type of environment means our lives are in danger. So, of course, mm-hmm. I believe that those black people saw that white man with the gun and wanted to go stop him. Because they knew what could happen. Well, what do we see lately, guys? White men with gun. They're they're the <laughs> ones, just, the leaders of mass shooters out here in America. Can I just mm-hmm. point out something really critical here? Rest in power to that young soul, that, 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 that warrior right there. That man ain't have no gun. Kyle, are you such they have a no gun. cuck? Are you such a cowardly little cuck that you had to gun down that small man because he, look, he looked about my height. You gunned down that small man who was chasing you, but you had the gun he did not. You poor little cowardly little cuck. Mm. <laughs> Shame. So white supremacy is kind of pathetic, if you ask me. It is pathetic. Not kind of. Man, that thing is pathetic as hell. But for some reason, not for some reason, we know it's always going to win here. It's always going to win here. I can't wait to see. And I pray that I it's in my lifetime. can't win without the system being rigged. No, Yo, the system is rigged. You- Look, we must be doing some shit right today because they. when I tell y'all they is in here today, they is mm-hmm. in here. On what it, time is boy. it? Let's take it to the after party. The key Uncentered. word. Unc- hey, you know what? No, 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 no. We're going to keep it. No, let's. No, we're going to keep it live. David, you make the call. I, we're we're going to keep it live. Because yeah, uh, yeah. cause, cause if I get to cuss it, y'all know I'll be now. We be, it'll turn into a whole uh, Burning Mac episode here. In the it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. too late for that. I already did that. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. We'll keep it live because there's one more story I want to cover. Who, yep, yep. who you know has gone under the radar, and I told okay. you I want to I want to follow this thing all the way through. Flesh it out because it's 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 one thing that we're showing here. Black people don't get justice. Now, not only do black people not get justice, the black woman her story will go unnoticed. It will be the yeah. biggest thing. It, Breonna Taylor was the biggest thing. My God, today along with George Floyd. Nothing, mm-hmm. nothing. Everybody knows Daniel Cameron because of that case. Mm-hmm. Nothing, nothing. But the updates on Breonna Taylor, the cop is appealing to get his job back after this is the cop. One of his bullets don't win her body is now appealing to get his job back. Now, remember, we were fighting. We were fighting. For justice for Breonna Taylor. My God, I am so sorry that you are not here today, Breonna Taylor. I am so sorry that it seems like we've stopped fighting, Breonna. Mm. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. But Jesus, like that really, that pains me. That just puts some kind of pain in me that's just unspeakable. 
I hate that. Um, but the former detective, Miles Cosgrove, remember we were saying their names. We were even saying the cops names so much. Miles Cog- Cosgrove, who shot um, a, a, a Taylor. Um, he's now fighting and appealing to get his job back. Let's take a look. One of the Louisville Metro Police Department officers involved in the killing of Breonna Taylor is fighting to get his job back. Detective Miles Cosgrove and his attorney began an appeal Tuesday with the Louisville Metro Police Merit Board. And according to local news station WFPL, the board can either uphold the original termination passed down in January or overturn the ruling and issue new punishment. WFPL also says that an FBI ballistics report shows two of Cosgrove's rounds struck and killed Taylor in March of 2020. Wow. Okay. Wow. Watching that really, it hurts me. Yeah. Yeah. It really hurts me because, you know, black people already get nothing. We don't get the short end of the stick. We don't get the long end. We get nothing. 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 Not a thing. We get nothing in this country. We get nothing in this country. And if you don't like when, when I... This is my disclaimer. If you if y'all don't like it when I speak about the disparities, us lacking and not getting anything in this country and having to fight for stuff and you know all that stuff, please remove yourself from the channel um, because I'm gonna go hard. Um, we get nothing. We get nothing. White folks, white Latinos, all you know, Asians may get just a little bit at the bottom piece. Uh, Hispanics may get a little something. Black folks get nothing. Even if your lineage, like you say, Ben, goes way beyond those of a lot of many white people in this country. Damn near all of them. Mm-hmm. We get most nothing. most most white people in this country have only been here for three generations. I can go back six. Mm-hmm. We get nothing. And to know that. When a black man is killed, we're finally being able to say something and at least get some media coverage over it. When a black woman is killed, I'm talking about we had everything. Breonna Taylor was the face of Oprah's magazine. She was painted on the ground. We were we needed to. Breonna Taylor was right up there. We were making sure we fought for both Breonna Taylor and George Floyd just as hard. But Breonna Taylor seemed to slip out of the nothing was said anymore. Nothing. The case was still in motion, but nothing was said anymore. It's something about black women going through the same thing. And it's like, nah, this is it. I hate that those cops are getting away with what they did. I hate that. Daniel Cameron, Mm. who could have said, done something at the forefront mm. of what's happened. I hate that one of the leaders, and I'm forgetting his name, which I wanted to cover, um, who led this, who led the charge, is actually behind bars and looking at so much time just for leading the charge to get Breonna Taylor justice. He's going to spend time, possibly spend time in jail for fighting for justice and the cops who killed Breonna I'm trying to get the job back. Justice in America is what they could justify. Hmm. And so long as they could justify killing us, that's what they call justice. I don't know how to feel about this because it's like the cop is saying, yeah, I don't shot somebody. Okay, okay, okay. And it was big news and all that stuff. But I'm trying to be a cop again. Put me back in. Put me back in. Tap me in, coach, so I can go do this again. So I could possibly do this again. I got blood on my hands. That ain't nothing. It was a black person. It was a black woman at that. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. let's Most put me put, put me back in, coach. Put me back mm-hmm. in, coach. Mm-hmm. I think his name was Jam Grandmaster um, J. Grandmaster Jay, yeah, yeah. and he was the one who led the charge, and now he is facing some yeah. time, a lot of time, because he he led this charge in. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, well, that's, in that's because Louisville. property p- buildings have more value than black lives in this country. Oh yes, yes. oh yeah, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Shame Somebody on Louisville, Kentucky. 
uh, somebody said something good in the chat. Yeah, we we get something, we get killed. Mm. Get- let me let me let me just, let me say 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 this real quick, especially uh, uh, about the. Um- Rebecca, you said something brilliant. You said, um, if we ain't got nothing else, though, what we got is the ability to to use our voice. Um, and damn thing those fools in the chat rooms on yeah, the chat room can do to stop us from saying the truth. And that's why they're here. Right. They're so upset because uh, in the in, in maybe it's the smallest corner of the Internet right now. But the truth is being said and it burns them. It irritates them so much. They're so pissed off right now that the truth is being spoken, that they have found their way to our comment section. So I enjoy enjoy their suffering because they have placed their joy on our suffering. Mm. These people in these comment mm. sections, the people, this entire American empire, people like Daniel, Daniel Cameron, who needs to go and check into the Lacunta Hotel, right? The Lacunta Inn, whatever it was like all all of these people, they have based their profit their 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 career aspiration that cop wants to come he wants to be put back in you're right because he got to do it again and it's all based on what they can get away with if they can get away with killing us well they're more than happy to try yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. and they'll take away the life of somebody listen they'll take away they took her life away this is in this is in and my best friend, she lives in Louisville, Kentucky. So don't kill me for pronouncing it this way. But um, in Louisville, Kentucky, <laughs> the the leader uh, and who we're just speaking, uh, Gr- Grandmaster Jay, he is he was indicted um, and charged with standing on a rooftop. Because remember, at that time, they were all protecting homes. They were protect- at, at the time in Louisville, Kentucky. They were pulling up at Daniel Cameron's house. Sitting out there like we're going to stay out here until you come out and do something. You know, I remember they were, uh, you know, they were protecting the people who were protesting. They were making sure that you're going to protest. We'll walk around you guys because we're licensed uh, uh, to carry, you know. And um, so they were doing that. They were protecting them. They were letting their voices be heard without others like Kyle Rittenhouse is pulling up. They're making sure. Oh, Grandmaster Jay from the NFAC. The yes, the effing around crew. Yeah, I'm yes. with you now. Okay, so he's on top of the roof out there, and he didn't know that he was pointing his guns at officers. They were undercover. They were, you know, you remember they were not. A lot of them were not dressed. They were pulling. They were up, snatching um, people off in the streets. Skies. Yeah, they were pulling up in the sky. Vehicles. To the, yes. yes, and and act like they were a part of these uh, uh, um, marches, but no. Yeah, those were the things that were going on. They were undercover cops in those moments. Um, So, anywho, he points them out and then he never shot them and never did anything. He just pointed them at them. And because, so now they're pressing that. They're saying because he pointed his gun at the feds and officers, he's facing um, about over 20 years, I think a maximum of 27 years for the federal charges in jail. Three years in prison and uh, a maximum of 27 years for the federal charges. And this is why I say, They want to make sure that they take away his whole life. They don't want this back on the streets. When we go back down to Fred Hampton and we see how they did him, even um, what's her name? Was it Billie Holiday that we just watched the story of? We watched how even on her and they did not want her to sing that song. So they made the feds got involved and they made sure that, you know, she even on, on her dying day, on her dying day, that her last dates would be remembered as would be remembered as her being a drug addict and somebody who was trying to cause mischief and 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 cause separation and had her legs on her dying days, her legs chained to the bed. This is what they do. They this is what they this is his story. This is back in history. They done shot up Fred. They made sure they silenced him in front of his pregnant wife, in front of his pregnant wife, pregnant wife. Uh huh. And then with the black woman, they wanted to remove her whole history for us to remember her as somebody who was a jazz singer. Somebody who made a difference in her music. They belittled her as much as they can, and they didn't want us to know. And a lot of people, including me, didn't know that she was chained to a bed. Well, hell, I didn't know. And they want to say it's alleged. Nah. Grandmaster Jay, alleged. There's more. This man is going to spend time and potentially spend time in jail for um, inadvertently pointing his 
properly licensed weapon at undercover officers who were on the ground below the absurdity of it and this little cuck of a boy of a man kyle rittenhouse can't even probably won't be found guilty because he was too scared running from that short brother looked like he was my height rest in power uh brother rosenbaum and just because i and just because i don't want it to slip through the cracks and i think it's worth mentioning drew hernandez that last um that last that last witness we saw not only is he a, a, a supposed journalist for Real News, Real, Real America News, which is like an OAN or Newsmax type of outlet, but he was in the Capitol on January 6th. Hmm. Of course you said was. it, Rebecca. You said it. And, and didn't you say he was after, after he test after this clown testified on behalf of Kyle Rittenhouse? He went on Tucker last night. On Tucker. Hmm. <laughs> From the courts to the cucker. I'm sorry, Tucker. Anyway, I think we've done a thorough job this morning of fleshing out all of the absurdities of white supremacy. Y'all want to party a little bit? We got the patron party tonight. At, at uh, What time did you say, James? I think uh, we said 9. 9 p.m. Yeah. Patron party. Patreon.com forward slash like it or not. Um, Rebecca, um, I don't want you to take two days off every week, but if you're coming back, snatching wigs like that uh, maybe we have to work on get you more days off because you came through you chose violence this morning um yeah. thank you yeah. for coverage this coverage i mean i chose violence because i want justice and i mean we're not gonna it, it sucks because I, I say this all the time you know and i want i want something different and i feel like the more that we don't talk about it it'll disappear um mm -hmm. so not that we have to talk about it every day but we're gonna talk about it on the show it's going to be black joy, but it's going to be we're going to we're going to call things out. We're going to call a thing a thing. I don't care how you want it. I don't care how you want to see it. I don't care how you want to serve to you, sweetie. Sit there and eat your food, because if you don't, <laughs> you should have sat there and ate your food. Like it or like not. it or not. Um, but, or not. you know, justice for all black people that have been done wrong in any way, shape or form. I don't know what else to say. I hope that every day I hope for my prayer every morning. And this is how you guys should know. And we'll take it to a nice, cute little after party moment. My prayer every morning is that every body that I know all my loved ones make it to see another day. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm. <sighs> that's right. Do you have to pray that prayer? Do you have to pray a prayer that your 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 nephews and nieces go to school and aren't treated other because they're yeah. other? Right. Mm. Not 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 walking home from school and the cop comes out and points a gun at them, a minor that's happened to me. And I have to pray every day. That doesn't happen to my, my nephews or my future children. So the conversation will continue until something happens. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Shoot. Listen, listen, I think this is quite enough. We got the patron party tonight. This is good. Unless, unless y'all just feel the need to like try to laugh this morning, but I mean, we could cut <laughs> no, out here. I'm okay. Um, are you, you coming? Wait, 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 wait. Rebecca mm -hmm. Azor, what time are you coming today? Oh, um, I got to work. I got a, I got a text from my boss. Oh. So, got to work. I, mm -hmm. um, I think Rebecca should respond to Tiffany J or, Lee, or, 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 or celebrate Tiffany J's response from the G section, but that's up to you guys. Tiffany J? Yeah. Tiffany J, I don't know who Tiffany J is. So, um, this uh, blonde insurrectionist cried defamation and got clapped back. Uh, by Tiffany J. Yes. Well, okay. let's take a look at it. Yeah. That that's G, well, G1 is the tweet and G2 mm -hmm. is the clip. G2 is a clip. And so she initially tweeted after January 6th that she wasn't going to go to jail because she's got blonde hair and white skin. I mean, she was she was close to being right. <laughs> she didn't get much jail time, but then when her, when Tiffany basically discussed her case and the fact that whoops you did go you are going to prison she yeah. cried she threatened to sue and cry defamation and that goes to oh <laughs> was, i'm about to say i got it. definitely not going to jail sorry i have blonde hair white skin a great job a great future and i'm not going to jail sorry to ran your hater parade i, I did nothing wrong Stupid. <laughs> thank you james <laughs> and she was i wanted you to, to read it in white girl voice <laughs> oh Bring it back on. Put it back, Put it back up. Put it back up. <laughs> <laughs> it this is definitely worth it. Go get the dick. Go get yeah. the dick. <laughs>
no, no, Sorry, no. You know go- no, I ain't gonna get you the wig. Put it back up, you know. <laughs> Just pretend the wig's there. Definitely not go going to jail. Sorry, I have blonde hair, white skin, <laughs> a great job, a great future, and I'm not going to jail. Sorry to rain on your hater parade. I did nothing wrong. I want to talk to your man. <laughs> that was everything. That was that's, that's exactly what she looks like. She sounds like, and I did right. hear about this story. And so, what was the develop? What, what happened next, David? So, shout out to Infinite Content, our so, our self labeled assistant producer on yes. Twitter. Right. We appreciate. He, he does he drop he all he the. He drops all the great links. Um, um, Tiffany J. T- T- Tiffany right. J, we, we've played clips of her in the past, just like l- laughing clips and uh, hilarious stuff. But apparently she had done a clip about this woman, Jenna Ryan, and Jenna Ryan didn't appreciate it. Well, this is what happened. Oh, players. Let me put my glasses on so I can see it. Okay, let me calm down. Players, guess who it is? It's Jenna Ryan. Jenna, I know you're not out here threatening to sue someone for defamation. I just know. I just know you fucking lying, Jenna. Well, shit, players. Looks like I'm gonna need a gift, send, and go because I'm on here defaming Jenna Ryan. Well, Jenna, I'm gonna save you some time and some money because it looks like you need it. Jenna, did you not get arrested for your participation in that failed insurrection on January 6th? Did you not plead guilty to those charges because of your role in the insurrection on January 6th? Jenna, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't prosecutors arguing for you to receive 60 days in prison and a $500 fine? Now, you must understand that in order for there to be a case for defamation, I had to be lying. This is not defamation, sweetheart. And all of this information is available online. I just told everybody about it. So if you want to sue me, make sure you sue the Daily Mail, CNN. Make sure you sue the Daily Beast. Make sure you sue all of those places. But Jenna, I have one more question for you. Are you still feeling noble and proud that you participated in the insurrection? You didn't get a pardon from Frumpy Dump. How did that white skin and that blonde hair work out for you? Didn't look like it worked out very well, now did it? And now you're on here talking about you're going to sue somebody for defamation. You just do that. I'll be waiting for your lawsuit. Come on, <laughs> her blinking with, she blinked with both eyes. I'll be ready for your lawsuit. <laughs> Not <laughs> both eyes, Shy. Yeah, Not yeah, both nah. eyes. <laughs> Did y'all see? So I was watching one of them talk shows last night. It was on the TV. But did y'all see the clips of Susan? Was it Bobert? Bear, whatever the, the, the white lady Bo-Bert. is. Yeah. Bobert. Did y'all see those clips of her? Like, it's no, no, a podcast. No, Man. It looks like you would think it's an SNL skit that you're watching, but these are actual, like, legit, bro. And then when I tell y'all, I'm just like, yo, she didn't say that for real, but she just like, Can we, we got to find that clip. Man, yeah. Like what did she say? This. Man, it was all over the place, Rebecca, talking about Trump. I was just about to say it probably didn't make any sense. They're not the brightest yeah, group. None at that. all. Not, white supremacists are not sending their best. You know, another reason the trolls in the best. another reason the trolls in the comment section are so furious this morning is because we do understand just how mediocre or subpar their lives really are. I mean, Lauren Bobert is the best that they can do. Marjorie Taylor Green, that's your hero. <laughs> and then but when they want somebody who's bipartisan. Y'all. But then when they want somebody who's bipartisan, no, nah, I ain't gonna, I ain't even gonna do it like that. But uh, girl, you, go ahead. I ain't even gonna do it May like well. that. May well. I, I, ain't, I ain't gonna do it like that. But they send um, a Nancy when they want bipartisanship. They send Nancy Pelosi, and it gets cringy. Jim Clyburn. It Real gets cringy. cringy. Real cringy. <laughs> it gets scared. It gets cringy. I'm looking and I'm like, hmm. Oh Lord, what has she done did now? Last time you had to read Nancy Pelosi for filth, I laughed for three days later. I ain't, what, I ain't even, I ain't even going. We saw, we saw how she handled like the George Floyd situation. It's like, oh, who okay. sent her? You guys are not sending your best. <laughs> but, you guys are not sending your best. Right? Is that all y'all got? That's what, what, oh, okay. what if they are though? What if they are? Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> it's not given what it's supposed to be, <laughs> Rebecca. Right. That's all y'all got. So, oh, okay. You dirty, Rebecca. You so. Use, mm, 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 mm. Oh, I'm going to finesse our way right out of that one. <laughs> but um, that's see, I'm going to move on. I told you I ain't even going to do it like that. You but did say um, move on. We but, are equal uh, opportunity uh, uh, readers for filth. It doesn't matter uh, your political mm-hmm. persuasion. Okay. What were you saying, but, James? 
Somebody was saying oh, something. No, okay. I said, I, th- I think James mentioned SNL when he was mentioning Bobert. A420 Kitty Dragon on Twitch said Kimmel did a skit asking people on the street how SNL was yeah. doing, but what he was playing was clips of Bobert. Oh, yeah. wow. It was that bad. Jesus and, and, Christ. And she's an elected official. You yeah, guys are not doing Listen. Right. Bro, we have got the hot um, sauce in the bag. You're not sending your best. <laughs> you're not. You're not. Oh, this is the, the, you're, not, you're not sending your you're best. Not, I will uh, get on. Oh, great. I'll get on Clinton. I'll get on Hillary. Because remember what happened? At least she's smart. Your, we have to go. We have to. People were saying, oh, I'm going to choose Trump or, or, or Hillary. And then they ended up choosing Trump because they weren't sending their best. <laughs> Hillary, not because you were a woman. I was going to vote for you because I remember that. Remember, we, we got we got our first oh, right. Man. Bill Clinton, yeah. not Bill Clinton. Um, uh, 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 President uh, Barack Obama was ours. We were he's our black. And then for the for to me, the white feminist groups had Hillary. Right. And that was the closest things that we can get. OK, as a woman and president. OK, whatever. That was a whole big thing. But you weren't sending your best because she was pulling hot sauce out of her bag. Uh, the ghetto of it all. <laughs> she had a history, a history of oh, abusing God. black countries, but we're not even going to go there. <laughs> Let's take it a step further. You're not sending your best because remember, Joe, we did it. And um, oh. she was saying that she used, she likes Cardi B. Remember that? <laughs> it's remember that? Like the last ten, the last <laughs> ten minutes be your best. the last ten minutes be the best sometimes. <laughs> you you're not sending your best. You're not sending your best. <laughs> you're not. Joe, Man- y'all sending Joe Manchin ass over here. Joe Manchin. <laughs> Kirsten, oh man, it's it's a, it's an epidemic of white mediocrity around us. What the hell is going on? People pulling up and getting recorded talking about they want to be gun toting folks and got dirt strapped to the heels of their their five dollar old navy sandals and they're <laughs> you're not sending your best you're not sending your best white supremacy y'all gotta do better you gotta do better you so gotta do better. Oh, man. oh man you got, got it? video. It's, it's funny though. It's it's, it's 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 a little. It's just under uh, three if, minutes, if, so we don't have to play if, the whole thing. If but. Lauren Berber, Bober, if this was if this was my representative, I, I'd be angry too. I'd be just as mad as the trolls. So let's run it. <laughs> we need a full investigation into just how many puppies were eaten alive on Fauci's watch. <laughs> what? I think it was a good skit. I the told look, y'all the hair. The voice was perfect. Yeah, almost real. Almost real, exactly. I don't want old Uncle Joe to have as much time at the beach as possible. In fact, my impeachment articles would totally free up his schedule. I mean, it's over the top, but that's what SNL's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a little, you know, to make the point. I like the actress. She's really pretty. She actually looks familiar. I was trying to figure out who she was. How do you think Lauren Bobert would feel (laughs) seeing that sketch? I I think she would feel like it was too far and be offended by it. If you're a little figure, you kind of have to expect that type of stuff. But it wasn't tasteful. I delivered one of my children in the front seat of my truck. Because as a mom of four, we got things to do. Ain't nobody got time for two and a half months of maternity leave. Are you embarrassed to see Hollywood portray? Nobody has time for maternity leave. This yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm very disappointed to see that. That that's how they betray one. Oh yes. That was obviously scripted by whatever directors did all that. But I feel like the real Lauren would actually be like a little upset about that. She has family. She has kids. She has other people who have, would have to see that, and it's embarrassing for her. It's embarrassing for the country to see. They did go. Too far. They did go too far with this. Now, what if oh, man. I told you that this listen, is really listen. Lauren Bobert? Ah! Oh. <laughs> it is? <laughs> Girl! Anyway. It's true. Seriously? It wasn't comedy at all, right? Like, she didn't mean it as a comedy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hallelujah. So she really said that? She really said that. Okay, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> that's obviously like a comedy skit, but... <laughs> Ew, the white guy doesn't know what funny. to say. He's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> That she was saying. That is crazy. Yeah, man. 
So white supremacy is that that gave full best. SNL skit, but her saying that I had my four kids in the four in the, in, in, in the front of my truck. So all them damn kids, you a whole lie. You was in the hospital. You had you had a nurse. You had all of that. All of that to say that a uh, patern- uh, maternity leave ain't real. Girl, have a seat. Have a yeah. seat. Two. It was so believable that that was an SNL sketch. Sketch, but the fact that you could talk to people, black folks, are always going. Why they got? We always trying to love on somebody. Why, why are we, we so patient? Always with them? Always. It ain't love on somebody. Because. The lies, though. You're not gonna catch them not knowing when they know on a day on a show. They gonna. Mm-hmm. You think they're gonna be like, oh, I don't know who that is. No, it's gonna be right. like, uh huh. No. Yeah. You know, it was real rude, and I don't think they should have did it. You know, that mm-hmm. skit was yeah. just terrible. Talking That's just the way they do people. That's the way they do all of us. It was far. Too far, because mm-hmm. you know how we know how to be. And there goes that thing. She's a human being too. She's a we, human being. We're 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 cold, we're cold switchers, and we know. Listen, they got me on the show, Kimmel. Hold on, let me. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, know I know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, and, you're, 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 you're not gonna get. Yeah, it's, she was wrong. She was. But um, I liked her on that one show. That one show. <laughs> she looked that familiar. Show. What, what you about Snap to say? Snap bring it to me because I don't even know who she is. I liked her on that that show. Mm. Friends. She's a, the one for Friends. Friends. Thank right. you. What? She, and, um, there's so many white people on Friends. She got to be she one was of so, them. She was so good on Friends. She was the one that was helping them move the couch out the door that didn't fit. <laughs> hey, I know that she episode. Was a, she was the one. The, 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 the dingy one for Friends, though. No. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a... a Tuesday, what uh, you was going to say today? <laughs> hey, look, uh, so this is what never ceases to amaze me about the right is that she can get on there and, and do basically this SNL skit and there'll be people on the white right who look at that as like, oh, yeah, she's she's saying what we like because she's owning the libs, right? Or she's owning the left, right? But they have, there's no policy. She just argued that, oh, let's, I'm going to have my kid in the front seat of my car then go on maternity leave. That's insane. Like, there's no policy. There's no, there's no, there's nothing that they can do for the people. It's just, oh, hey, let me just speak to your hate. That's all I, that's all they speak to. Let me, (laughs) let me, let me, let me up the ante a little bit. Let's skip a couple of steps. These savages are so far gone that they're throwing their children on the altar of COVID-19. Okay. Mm -hmm. They need to be, I don't, I don't, I would say locked up, but that doesn't work well for black people. So I'm going to take that out of my vernacular, but they certainly don't need to be in power because they're trying to get as many people killed as possible. And they laugh all the way to their graves. Ask Phil Valentine. I read his book. I thought he was a smart guy. Dumbass is dead now. COVID-19. <laughs> oh my God. Benjamin wow. P. Dixon. Damn. <laughs> Benjamin P. Dixon. That really quickly. Oh, <laughs> How we do that around here? <laughs> Oh man. oh man! Sweet home, that's Oklahoma. how they're committed to death. No, no, let's be real. Let's be real. I have his book. <laughs> this, they, they, they're not only dying themselves; they're killing them. They're so. so I, I just want to speak to the to the to the levels to what Tunde's comment was. Like he's talking about, it's like an absurdity. Like mm-hmm. she's not talking about policy. Not yeah. only is she not talking about policy, she's trying to make sure as many people die from COVID nineteen as possible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. Young I'm baby. sorry, guys. I'm trying to I'm this, trying to push us closer this, to the day where we can specifically wish COVID on one person, like by name. We're not there I, yet, mm. but I'm trying to move the Overton window there. Mm. <laughs> and y'all, this chick has. I, I'm just. I can't believe that she has a real podcast that she does. I'm just looking through her little. No, she's YouTube a congresswoman. Page. Tammy, bro, she's a congresswoman. That's who it is. She reminds it, me of it, Tammy. What was her name? La, La Laringa. <laughs> it's a Tammy Lauren. Tammy Lawrence, the panga. The blonde hair one, right? Boy meets world. Don't you? Don't you? Yeah, no, she's fine. She a bad. She's not Tammy Lawrence. She's a brunette Tammy Nanny. Yeah. Tommy Lawrence. If because but 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 this woman is seated, and if 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 Tommy was Tommy in today's day and age, about two years ago, Tommy would be seated too. If she was running for something about two years ago. Uh-huh. For sure. Tommy was Tommy ran so that Lauren could run. <laughs> Somebody said it best. She Lauren Bobert looks like Tina Fey. Oh, Tina no. Fey. Not and not the Tina other Fey? chick. Now, don't bring Tina Fey into this. Being yeah, the other chick. They're both beautiful, uh, though. 
They're both beautiful, though. I will say they what's both. The, oh. what's, the, what's the person that ran for president? Sarah from Alaska? Palin. Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin. There we go. She looks like a mix of Tina Fey and Sarah Palin head ass. You got it. Whoever said that. That is smart as Sarah Palin. This they have a combined IQ of. Uh, she between the two of them. looks like Sarah Palin. Wait, pull it back on Sarah the screen, Palin. bro. We got we to know who we're talking about. And let me say this Sarah Palin is not. <laughs> Sarah Palin's a beautiful woman as well. And so is this. Um, yeah. um, She's also girl. dumb. She's, She's also beautiful. dumb as well. But yes, yeah. and, but that's the thing. You guys could be here, and the, what people were able to say about her is beautiful gowns, beautiful gowns. Beautiful. I, oh my God. We can't say nothing else. This does look like a sketch. This does look like Tina Fey is playing Sarah Palin. <laughs> like Bring Tina Fey yes. back. So that she can play Lauren <laughs> Bobo because she's gonna be killing it. Promise we you that. Play. Hey, no, you gotta play. You gotta play the first five seconds where she says we gotta investigate the puppy situation. Play. This is Tina Fey playing like, Sarah Palin. How many puppies were eaten? Playing Paul Lauren Bobo. <laughs> we need a full investigation into just how many puppies were eaten alive on Fauci's watch, <laughs> brother. <laughs> This like, is a she congress like, person. She needs to be one of the mean girls. She's like one of the um, I can't <laughs> go out she looks like. I'm sick. <laughs> which, which one is fetch? No, fetch. but the mean girls though. The, the one mean girls knew how happen. to step out. The mean girls knew how to step out. The mean girls were strategic. You know what? Yeah. Bubba, <laughs> you might be on something. Because this heifer could be, she might be strategic. This might be her strategy that Tommy was going with as well. Tommy had to play the dumb blonde. I do not think mm. that she was really a dumb blonde. She had to play the dumb blonde, the one yeah. that was all about the right. And, and 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 then, you know, she played that sexy country girl at the same time, which got her her coins, but also got her right. onto Fox, right? That's and right. then kicked off of Fox. And then she was doing actually what I'm doing now. I think she's sitting bad. in the house. <laughs> <laughs> But one of the those people are, come at our own expense. Oh my god! But, but, but somebody, somebody was getting paid for what she did. Like, like really paid. Like she, even with her in the house, she still garnered so much. Where people were like, "Yeah, we're we're looking for Tommy. We're looking for Tommy. We're looking for Tommy. We're looking for." So they literally followed her there. This woman is seated, and is it doesn't matter woman. because. In today's day and age, you could be seated in that because it's still going to like. And we got Beavis and Butthead in there as well. Uh, it's a lot Gates. of crazy happening. But <laughs> this, Jordan. the popularity is what's going to win <laughs> your popularity on social media, your capabilities of um, being on the tick and talks as a 34 year old congresswoman. Is she or uh, um, whatever she th- your capabilities as such? She's 34 years old. I mean, she's a beautiful girl. She looks young. But she doesn't, I mean, the, usually white supremacy make you look like, you know, uh, Boba Fett or something. Raisins. You know? yeah, raisins. Raisins in the sun. <laughs> raisins in the sun. <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> Kelly McEnany. Not Kelly McEnany. Hey, uh, yeah, go ahead. What you got? A comparison and contrasting. Here we go. My favorite part of class. <laughs> Chuck's the position. So here <laughs> we have Lauren Bobert or whatever. Uh huh. And then. Hold on. Let's see what you got. It's going to be uncanny. Right. Oh, Jesus. It's perfect. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Shit. Ooh. It's three generations. <laughs> Wait, is that Tina? <laughs> Tina Fey. Yes. Oh. Tina and then Sarah, Sarah Palin. Oh, my gosh. And then Lauren. And it's then like both of them had a baby together. Oh, my it's, God. I, it's it's Tina like Faye. three generations. It's like the young one, the y- older, older, oldest, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> To, to, no, oh, well, Sarah Palin is giving older than Tina Fey in that one. I'm not um, gonna lie, but, Lauren yeah. Bobert looked like she could be damn near in college still. Like white she's supremacy has young, not aged right? her she's yet. 30, she's but she's 34 years old, um, yeah. and you know, just all of this together is a joke. It's it's crazy. Tina Fey, come back. Give come her about back six months. And, and, Give her about and, and, six and more this. months of this pure white supremacy that she's she's snorting right now. She's like taking the uncut strain of white supremacy right now uh she'll look like uh the crypt keeper by midterm elections yeah i don't i don't know because oh, yeah. i don't because i think you come out the gate looking that way there were a few that came out the gate looking <laughs> what's that, that way. lady what's that lady who, we're not gonna uh, even say trump. it now um uh, we're not gonna daughter? say i wasn't gonna go there but that's who came to mind <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a kelly something right yeah um yes, kelly Ann conway my god today <laughs> 
And I feel Kelly like Kelly Ann Conway Conway. used to give I feel like Kelly Ann Conway used to give Baywatch vibes back in the day. But yeah, working for working for for, well, for do that these you. yeah, working for evil people will take away your soul. You become unattractive. You become like all of the above. They used to say money keeps you looking fly. Yeah. Not all that good. So not all money is good money. Mm-mm. Mm. So I'm going to give up. Uh, we're going to put Lauren Bolbert on the clock. <laughs> How long before you think she decays into Kelly, uh, Con- Kelly and Conway levels of white supremacy skin? Decay? I feel like they're starting <clears throat> to defy it, though. You know, um, oh, they're drinking the baby blood. Then that's what's going on. Yes, oh, yeah, that's I feel like that's starting going to defy on. it. Look I put at a the- question mark after that, by the way. Folks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like they're starting to, to, to defy it right now. Um, you know, oh. Can I make a correction while it's on my mind? I know it's it's completely out of left field. The other day when we were covering the story of um, um, the astral world and we we uh, the three of us, uh, or at least I did for sure. I don't know if y'all did. uh, I repeated what the police officer said about the security guard getting injected in the neck. Yes. Um, Turns out that was a lie. And y'all, I should have known better because I don't ever trust the police. What made me think I could but trust the like, police in that let, moment? Let, let, me, let, me, let me make a correction for you, though. It wasn't. It didn't happen. The, the, all, the, the guy didn't get injected with anything. Yes, we were we were reporting. What, you, you didn't make a lie. You well, didn't say a lie. Yeah. That's what was mm-hmm. told to the police officer by someone who was there. Now, um, uh, by uh, one well, of I'm the talking, people. No, no, I'm saying police officers. When the police give us reports, right. our instinct should be to not trust it. And yeah, I, but I can't. I, I can't always. I can't always agree with that though, because in that yeah. particular moment, we had to get some kind of news, and it had to come from the police. Unfortunately, somebody who was there that the police did trust for information, right? Uh, um, yeah, that's fair. That's who, fair. who was working there, who was supposed to give them, hey, this is what was going on, said that he was stuck in the neck um, by something with drugs, like you know, they were sticking yeah. people in the neck. So he said that. He said that's that that that's the news that they they were that he was given. Now he came out and corrected, it, and he was kind of upset. It looked like he wanted to grab the man who said that to come <laughs> get your line behind up here. Yeah, you know, he, he, like he, 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 he yeah, looked like he had some strength. Like he's like, like you mother. He's like, wait, wait. Oh, okay, so is a black stupid. officer trusting a white man telling him something? See, <laughs> listen. So and it was supposed to be an official who was working there. So mm-hmm. now to hear that from mm-hmm. the official that's supposed to be taking care of what was going on, gotcha. to make that claim and then turn around and say it was a lie. It also Oops. put in people's minds. There could have been something because so much news is coming out against uh, the whole Astro world. Travis, uh, yeah, uh, Ed, Travis yeah. Scott, everyone involved that maybe this person could have changed their story as well. With that, like, hey, mm-hmm. change your story and we could you know, talk about something that could have happened. As well, well, I just wanted to throw that out there. That's a, and actually you make a really great point there, uh, Rebecca. I didn't see that second part, but uh, um, cool. I just want to make sure I do that. Yeah. Out there. So you yeah, were just, you know, know, at that point. Yeah, that's that's what everybody had. Heard, it's more of an so update time, to the story. Yeah. 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 It, no, no, it, it I, just, I just I just felt some kind of way because I'm like, God damn it. I know I'm not supposed to. Tr- I mean, you, you're, yeah. you're right. No, but, but this I don't is information trust that came directly oh. from. The, yeah. the officers, it's nothing that you were given that was wrong. They gave him wrong information as well. He was pissed. You just see what I see. Yeah. I know the other day, y'all. No, I just know. I just know. That. And this yeah. and that. And da, 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 da. But yeah, it started a lot of conversation, too. So it, it, I think it's more Rebecca, about we that. must really miss you because we, we're staying into overtime with you. now. <laughs> I think it's more about the power part of um, the people that uh, Travis Scott, that it's more about power that the people like Travis Scott um, and his legal team and things like that have who could have spoken to people who have already made statements and could have, you know, offered up something, whatever. And that's just my, me, my opinion on that situation. And so, um, yeah. So that's just that. that. Patron party tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, patreon.com forward slash like it or not. Or if you are a patron of the Benjamin Dixon Show, you know where to get access to Twitch. If you're a Twitch subscriber, you know where to be in the place. Rebecca Zor is going to be there. Um, James, it's in your hands, man. Yep. Um, it's Friday, guys. I hope that you enjoy. I'm out of here. What? Oh, are you making a joke? No, she said, I'm, he said Rebecca be there. He's like, Rebecca's not going to be there tonight. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Thank you for, for clarifying for me. <laughs> I will not be at the patron party tonight. But if you are there, make sure you come ready to tip your DJ, tip your host. It's going to be a nice night tonight. tonight I see. Tonight, I'm going to have to write that in. Party. Make sure you pull up with your friends, your boyfriends, your friends, friends, your boot thing, your food bay, all of that, because it's going down tonight. Eight o'clock at the patron party. And no, Rebecca Zora is going to be there not with I'm flying not. colors. <laughs> I'm not. I love you. Love you, Rebecca. Yeah, so Have I'm fun. Not, I'm definitely not. James. <laughs> as long as James is there, we got a party. See you there tonight, bro. Yeah, you got no choice, do it. All right, y'all. We love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> 
before y'all get uh yeah, there we go. Before we get out of here today, make sure y'all have a nice for the day. First of all, thank y'all for joining. We'll see y'all tonight, 9 p.m. Patreon.com slash like in the map. So make sure that y'all become y'all come join in. Bring y'all to the party, man. Hey, hey, y'all have a great day. Thank y'all everything for a great week. Love y'all. We mean it. And lastly, affirmation for the day. I am only speaking kind words to myself today. I am only speaking kind words to myself today. Y'all go be great, man. Y'all already great. Stay blessed. Let the universe give you what you need. Love y'all mean it. We will see y'all tonight. And then if not tonight, Monday. Enjoy your weekend, y'all. Deuces. Chicken sex sticks and stones